hi there god bless you you're welcome to the brand new year 2024 the year that the lord has brought us forth into in psalms 118 verse 23 the bible said for this is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight with jesus joy we bring you um glad tidings we bring you the testimonies we bring you good news we bring you a brand new year that jesus by his infinite mercy has saddled us all the way into and for these very peoples he has predestined our life to be greatly changed this year indeed will never be like the previous year everything god has said about your life will surely come to pass and we will be glad to present to you this year and this day the prophetic word for the season through the mouth of god's servants apostle joshua selman we trust that you have a wonderful time and god's benefits daily loaded upon your life your family your business career and your ministry even as your life is set to experience a new turnaround stay put and ensure that everything god have said about your life in this video for this new year surely comes to pass engage your faith in the word of the lord as you see his blessings upon your family upon your career upon your academics upon your ministry upon your business and everything that has to do with your life everyone connected to your life must experience the blessings and the overflowing abundance of the lord stay put and don't lose faith in the word of the lord that you'll be receiving god bless you so much we love you Father, I care for the importations of soul tonight. Your word is about to come beyond the importations of the spirit, the importations of soul. Lord, I cry for it tonight. I want to access the center point of the intelligence of the graces that sponsor this apostolic. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus, praise the name of the Lord. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the grace to pray. We thank you for the grace to worship. Tonight we declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. Jesus, we declare that this remains your place of habitation, a place of transformation, a place of lifting. In the name of Jesus, we open up our hearts to access your wisdom tonight. Speak, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me apologize for just coming, late coming. We're just coming straight from the airport. And um, sometimes this is a sacrifice that comes with bearing the cross. My sincere apologies. We'll go straight to the word. I have something very powerful and I was just praying for the grace to be able to deliver it to us. By the way, it was a very wonderful time of prayer. It's good many times to just obtain grace from God and to stretch in the spirit. It is part of the meeting when you take out time to pray. Hallelujah. Tonight, um, I may not be teaching where I know that we're on a series of um, the graces that are at work. There are three of them left, but we may suspend them for the coming weeks. Um, from Thursday, the Lord began to put very strong in my heart to teach what I'm about to teach. I've not taught it here in Abuja, and I think it is a very timely 
and relevant message especially for such a time as this and so i'm praying that the lord will grant us grace and grant us wisdom to learn within the time that we have in the name of jesus christ father tonight this is a very special teaching is one that you have brought one of the mysteries of the kingdom it has brought wisdom to the life of many let it bring wisdom to your people tonight this is a prayer from the depth of my heart and i pray by the power of the holy spirit that it will change our lives in jesus name ecclesiastes chapter 3 i want to share with you a very deep spiritual mystery tonight that controls relevance a mystery tonight that controls the continuity of the impact upon the life of men hallelujah this is a mystery that controls transgenerational relevance it is the key that can keep you after many years even when people are falling by the wayside the bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof that means that just because you started well does not mean you will finish well just because you started um from a standpoint of relevance and impact it does not mean that you will finish that way pay attention ecclesiastes chapter 3 we'll read from verse 1 to 8 to everything there is a season someone says season so the bible tells us that there are seasons and a time to every purpose under the heavens uh-huh there is a time to be born it says there is a time to die there is a time to plant there is a time to pluck up that which is planted verse 3 there is a time to kill there is a time to heal there is a time to break down there is a time to build up verse 4 there is a time to weep there is a time to laugh there is a time to mourn there is a time to dance there is a time to cast away stones and there is a time to gather stones together there is a time to embrace and there is a time to refrain from embracing we're still reading there is a time to get and there is a time to lose there is a time to keep and there is a time to cast away there is a time to rend and there is a time to sow there is a time to keep silence and there is a time to speak the last verse there is a time to love and there is a time to hate there is a time for war and there is a time of peace oh intelligent student what was the common word in every sentence time 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 everything kept changing except one word time time he connected everything to times and he connected everything to seasons first chronicles chapter 12 please and verse 32 first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 and of the children of issachar the bible says which were men help us under the anointing please they were men that had understanding of the times he says and they knew what israel ought to do as a result the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command they were people who had an understanding of the times and they knew what israel had to do ready for the last verse psalm 90 and verse 12 a verse for wise people so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom can we read it together one to read that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom please may i request that protocol all the vacant seats aside from these ones please let them be filled there's no reason why we should have empty seats when there are people standing please please hallelujah we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know 
I have taught you that a mystery is a modus operandi, a, a body of knowledge that is privy to a group of people. In this case, privy to believers, men and women who are in Christ. And so when the Bible talks about the mysteries of the kingdom, it is a revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom, the way the kingdom operates, so that by accessing these mysteries, we can reign, we can excel in life, we can live. When the Lord opened me up to this truth, it so impacted my life. I, I wish that I, I could gather the whole world and preach this message to everyone alive. Because as you will be learning, there are severe consequences for not knowing these truths that I'm about to share. It does not matter whether you are a pastor, a politician, a businessman. It doesn't matter what walk of life, young, old. This is a truth that applies to all. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the secret for transgenerational relevance. You understand what I'm teaching you tonight. After 30 years, you will still be standing standing strong and doing so much for the kingdom hallelujah praise the name of the lord the bible tells us in genesis chapter 41 please pay attention that there was a king in egypt called the pharaoh of egypt is that true and then the bible says once upon a time that this pharaoh of egypt went to bed and this pharaoh had a dream and it was a very very mysterious dream it was a dream that troubled him he was so troubled by that dream when he woke up the bible says he gathered all his wise men we're going to read it but just a background and he said what is the meaning of this i'm 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 faced with a dream here that i cannot interpret that dream you see ladies and gentlemen controls a mystery there is a revelation behind that dream the first thing i may want this is powerful because there are certain levels of revelation you cannot be trusted with until you rise to certain realms the dream that pharaoh had even though he did not honor the god of the hebrews the god of heaven he was the only one who was in a position to do something about that dream there are times that God will have to make do with unbelievers because there are no sufficient unbelievers in strategic positions that can allow God reveal some things. Hallelujah. Which is dangerous. We must never get to a point in our lives where God would have to teach us through unbelievers simply because believers have not accepted positions of strategic influence to allow them host the purposes of God for a season or for a generation anyway but in this case so pharaoh has this dream and he calls on the people and eventually joseph comes and he begins a discussion that will be a lesson for us tonight praise the name of the lord please follow me patiently as we explore this dream because the dream is a mystery a mystery that speaks of a um, a reality that is in the life of all men failure to know this will cost you more than you can imagine genesis 41 from verse 1 help us holy spirit and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river verse 2 it's a long reading please be patient Media, let's walk together. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well favored kind and fat fleshed, and they fed in the midew. Uh huh. Behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill favored and lean fleshed. Was just talking of cows or calves, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. This is the first mystery. This is his dream now. Pharaoh has a dream and he's seen two sets of cows. 
one fat healthy looking the other slim and then in the process of time remember we're dealing with time that the lean ones ate the fat ones and never increased in size just went like that verse 5 and he slept and dreamed the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up before one stock rank and good next verse please and behold seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the seven thin years devoured the seven rank and full years and pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of egypt and all the wise men thereof and pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto pharaoh follow carefully then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember my faults this day pharaoh was wrought with his servant and put me in the ward in the captain of the guard's house both me and the chief baker he's narrating something that happened and we dreamed a dream in one night i and he we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream and there was there with us a young man an hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream did he interpret and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged 14 and pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh pharaoh said unto joseph i have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it are we still together and i have heard of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it next verse joseph answered pharaoh saying it is not in me god shall give pharaoh an answer of peace pharaoh narrates the dream one more time in case you didn't get it the first time let's try it again in my dream he said behold i stood upon the bank of the river and behold there came up out of the river seven kind fat fleshed and well favored and they fed in the midew and behold seven other kind came up after them poor and very ill ill-favored and lean flesh such as i never saw in all the land of egypt for badness and the lean and ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind 21 and when they had eaten them up now this is the fearful part of the statement it could not be known that they had eaten them so this is not an issue of hunger now but they were still ill favored as at the beginning so i awoke and i saw in my dream and behold seven ears came out in one stalk full and good and behold seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears and i told this unto the magicians but there was none that could declare it unto me 25 and joseph said unto pharaoh the dream that fell the dream of pharaoh is one and god had shown pharaoh what he is about to do the dream that pharaoh had pharaoh forget about all of the different things you saw it is the same thing you have seen isn't it powerful different scenarios but the message is the same god had to keep emphasizing to pharaoh pay attention because what i am showing you will surely come to pass now joseph is interpreting the dream joseph said unto okay next verse 26 the seven good kind are seven years that means the cows have nothing to do with cows 
the plans have nothing to do with plans can you already see that many people have been making mistakes in their interpretation of dreams if many of you were to interpret these dreams now you will be surprised at the many ungodly extra biblical interpretations that will come from this dream is that true most people will start talking about something that god even is not his attention is not there this already is a lesson that it truly takes grace from god to interpret correctly i probably would have failed this interpretation woefully hands down who would ever know that a cow and plants could mean time he said what you saw has nothing to do with animals or plants it is a mystery of time the seven good kind are seven years everybody shout time please say after me years. years keep the scripture there please keep the scripture keep the scripture we're still working on it media and he says the seven good years are seven years the dream is one and the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are also seven years and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine this is the thing which i have spoken unto pharaoh what god is about to do he showeth unto pharaoh now pay attention let's take it again you are pharaoh the king of egypt and you go to bed and out of the many many things you can see from the realm of the spirit god superimposes your revelations to bring a matter of urgency that joseph says will surely come to pass and then you have this dream and this young hebrew boy comes to tell you the dream represents two sets of time are we still together that the seven good cows just like the plants are seven good years and that the other one represents seven years also and here is the mystery that years can eat years i understand that animals can eat other animals is that true but i never knew that time can also eat time pay attention now that seven years of plenty can be eaten by seven years of famine to the degree that you would never imagine that there was once years of plenty this is a very powerful mystery please pay attention behold there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of egypt and there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten shall forgotten hmm. in the land of egypt and the famine shall consume the land 31 and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following for it shall be very grievous next verse and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and it will surely god will surely bring it to pass now therefore let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt he's bringing a solution now let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part 20 percent of the land of egypt in the seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine is someone learning already which shall be in the land of egypt that the land perish not throughout the famine just stop there we'll take it from 37 shortly now please look up 
Pharaoh is receiving counsel from a young boy empowered by the Spirit of God. And he's sharing a mystery that Pharaoh, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how powerful Egypt is, God is revealing to you that there is a law, the law of seasons, that it is a law that will switch. It has nothing to do with you being good. It has nothing to do with you being bad. It is the law of seasons. Is that true? And that in every man's life, born again or not, this law is not one you can pray out of your life. It is established. Pharaoh, what you have is not just a dream for Egypt. It's a mystery to be given to men. That in the life of every man born of a woman, the law of seasons is applicable to all. There will always be seasons of plenty represented by the fat cows. And there will always be seasons of leanness. The difference is whether you heed to the advice of Joseph or otherwise. Those who disobey Joseph are about to pay the price with their entire lifetime. Because years can eat years. Are we blessed? Joseph tells Pharaoh, this is not something you can pray and say, God, change it. No. You see, let me tell you this. When God created the earth, the Bible tells us that he made the stars to signify times and seasons. The law of seasons is a very powerful spiritual law that many believers have not been taught. And many well-meaning, innocent people have had to pay the price because they did not know how to discern seasons. Our opening scripture, Ecclesiastes says there is a time for everything. It begins to list various events, but the consistent factor is that there is a time for them. Hallelujah. Yes. Pharaoh hunger is about to come to the earth famine is about to come to the earth and that includes egypt but you have a chance now there is a season here in africa especially in nigeria we have you know and all of that but then let's work with what we know we have rainy season and dry seasons please look up how many of you know that all those seasons have their features is that true yes when it is rainy are we together now it doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor educated or uneducated the moment it is rainy season there are certain things that are given to you by reason of the season the land is soft enough for cultivation you do not need to labor so much to till the ground because the rain has done that for any season why because the season comes with it an advantage of a cool weather you may not go through so much labor to clean and fight dust because the season itself helps to purify the air if that season is done it will switch to another season and you will look at the ground as though water never fell on it is that true you will see the ground cracked you will see wind that was ever green now looks dry and brown and it looks like water never fell there you look at the clouds and they are so clear you come out in the night and you can see the stars not because something else happened to your eyes an advantage of seasons now it is still possible to farm during the dry season but you will have to find a way of outsourcing water to simulate a rainy season during dry season for the plant to grow. This is very powerful. You can afford to be careless with your car, for instance, during the dry season. Your wiper is not working, your lights are not working. You can afford, your tires are not strong. You can play all those games. But when it is rainy season, one night you just come out and without any notification, a heavy downpour comes and you see the consequences of not having a good wiper. Is that true? You may not know how wrong you are during the dry season, but another season can show you whether you were doing right or not. Seasons are 
powerful. There are many things you may be doing wrong, but just because you have not arrived at a season that will show you how wrong you are, you may think you are right for a long time until seasons change. And there are times you can be doing something very right and look like a fool for many years because the season that shows your wisdom has not yet come. Once upon a time, the wisdom of Noah looked like foolishness because the season of rain had not come. Is that true? He kept putting the animals there and others were laughing at him and said, to what end is this? But a season would soon come. Pharaoh, what you saw is a mystery that happens to all men. That no, no matter how anointed, no church, no politician, no government, no nation has one season forever. Oscillating seasons is part of the law of seasons that all men must understand. Why am I telling you this? I'm teaching this message out of a heart of passion and sincerity with, with no sense of sarcasm whatsoever. Have you seen people who maximize certain seasons in their lives but they forgot that seasons will change and they ignored the advice of Joseph until the seasons changed? This has caught up with politicians. It is terrible to be out of relevance in your lifetime. This has caught up with men of God. This has caught up with family people. Changing seasons. That no season, no season ever remained to a point of penury. There are politicians today who were once instruments of awe and honor. And because of lack of discernment of seasons, they came down. There are sincere men of God. They didn't backslide, but they were careless with the discernment of seasons. And today they have been brought down to nothingness. Pharaoh, the dream that you have is deliverance. It is a mystery that if you understand, will save you. The law of seasons. Is God speaking to us? In every man's life, there will be this season of fatness and there will be this season of lean cows. What do they mean? Write this down. According to the vision or the dream of Pharaoh and the interpretation of Joseph, the seven years of plenty represents seasons of ease, seasons of abundance, and seasons of opportunities the seven years of the fat cows the seven years of the or the seven years of fat corn and and the flourishing plants represent seven years of ease e-a-s-e -E. years of abundance and years of opportunities please if you're writing underline the word opportunity seven years of fat cows represent years of opportunity what opportunity opportunity to know god opportunity to maximize destiny opportunity to invest in your life and then the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity for various reasons for instance let's use biological age how many of you agree that by the time a man is 60 or 70 years prepared or not seasons would have changed the strength that you have when you were 10 20 30 may not be there again you may not have that kind of energy again. Seasons have changed. And if you are a worker in this country, maybe a, a federal government worker, a civil servant, prepared or not, there's something called retirement. Is that true? The meaning of that is that you may not have the opportunity to go to work and collect a regular salary again. 
The reason why pension works is because it's part of obedience to the advice of Joseph. Is that true? That from your seven years of work, something is kept so that by the time you retire, it will be given to you again. We are coming there. So by the time a young man in ministry who is probably in his 30s or 40s is now living in the season of a man who is 70, 80 years. A man who may not have the energy to run around. And the young man too is doing man of God. Big man. You know what you are doing? You are already destroying the opportunity that you have for the seasons that are coming. Let me tell you this. There are many people. There are... I watched an obituary there is a course in the school of ministry under personal transformation i i teach the students on something called the graph of life it's an attempt to give the students wisdom to help them understand the brevity of life to the end that they live efficient and effective lives are we together and this this came as a result of an obituary i saw please look up in this obituary it was a two or three minutes um tv program and this is what i saw i saw a man who was in his late 80s now had died and they were announcing but for some reason they were able to gather his photos i don't know how they found it photos when he was a young boy to a teenager a young adult an adult in his middle age becoming elderly an old man together with his grandchildren and then a few moments on the sick bed before he died they ran that slide within two minutes and i saw a man's entire destiny run on a slide within two minutes when i watched that it had an impact on my life and that's where the scriptures so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and i made up my mind that i was going to build a course out of that experience to teach the school of ministry students that as 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 long as life looks it is deceptively brief there is a hymn that says life at best is very brief like the falling of a leaf hallelujah are we learning something tonight Please do not take anything I'm teaching tonight personal. It is truth that I will give you. I have seen people in old age today with nobody to help them. They walk alone as though they were never, they never had the privilege of youthfulness. And the question I'm tempted to ask is what did they do with those days? Because at that time the lean cows have come to eat up the fat ones. I told you yes and eight years there are people today who retired as directors ceos and yet they may not be able to raise hundred thousand with honor because during their time of glory they did not know that seasons change there are musicians today respectfully speaking there are sportsmen today once upon a time if you mention their names people will stay awake but today they can move around on the road and you see them and not even care about them why because seasons have changed is that true yes once upon a time in this nation when you mention certain names once upon a time in Africa, when you mention certain names, as powerful as these great men are, look at men like Reinhard Bonke, look at men like T.L. Osborne, look at men like um, Billy Graham. As much as we love them, the truth is whether we like it or not, according to the law of seasons, eventually they have gone. Seasons. That means everybody who finds himself on the stage, you better realize someone left there before you got there and realize that very soon, the light of destiny is pushing you out. Now listen, there is the deception that comes with these seasons of glory. It makes you believe you will never leave the stage for any reason. This has deceived men of God. This has deceived people in politics. This has also deceived parents. 
They forgot that these children will one day grow and they will be young. And they treated the children in an evil way. Many of them today are old and wrinkled and left alone by angry adults who were once babies. There are nations today who did not take advantage of their human capital to invest in the young people during the seasons of power. Most of those young people are now the thieves that cause mayhem in society. There are people who rose in honor. They never raised anybody in their lifetime. They didn't raise anybody from their community. They are the only ones. And when the devil attacked them, he got them alone because they had no support system. Learn the wisdom that comes from this mystery tonight. Pharaoh, the dream is twice because it is established. There is nothing you can do against it. You can only build a system to overcome it. Hallelujah. It is a dangerous thing to once be relevant. It is a dangerous thing that in your lifetime you are still alive and yet your life becomes a warning, not a message. They tell people if you want to go far, please don't use this reference. You are still alive and breathing. Are we learning? So we know that there are alternating seasons in the life of anyone. The moment you see rainy season, rainy season comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. The moment you see dry season, dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. If you receive the season and don't receive the letter, that prepares you for the next season you will be in trouble the moment you see men celebrating you and saying wow triumphant entry remember one day the same people will say crucify him the moment you see people saying crucify him remember that one day john will also stand close to the cross listen if you master seasons you will remain relevant through seasons I'm speaking because some of you are in these seasons right now you can be in a season where nobody knows you you're a man of God who is being made by God nobody knows you no invitation no fame no glory no nothing and if you do not do anything with that season the day your season of appearing comes prepared or not you see do you know once upon in a time in my life I had the luxury to pray I could lock myself even if it's for three days at will and not come out because I had the time today I don't have that kind of time if I want to make that kind of time I will have to go out of my way many programs will suffer just because I want three days to myself changing seasons young lady now that you do not have children God says fast for three days and he said no you don't know the days that are coming you don't know the responsibility of the attacks that can come on your children you are enjoying the fat cows and God is saying pray young man you want to start ministry you are moving around with protocol God is saying nonsense sit down there are days coming you do not know the the demons that attack mantles and anointings prepare because where I am sending you to you will need power in the spirit for the kind of results you want can i tell you don't let people pity you out of preparing for great seasons sometimes people can love you too much they will say this is too much this fasting is too much this thing is too much they don't know the other seasons coming God says, I want to take you and give you an influence with kings. And the Lord says, go for another degree. Go for another program. And they say, it's too much. And the devil is deceiving you. And time is going. Don't say there's time, there's time for everything. But let me tell you, there are, when you buy a product, there's something written on the product. Best before. That means if you want to enjoy this product, consume it 
before certain times imagine a man of 45 years going to primary school yes no knowledge is a waste but as far as i'm concerned if i'm the teacher that man will not write exams i will just give him p and say go because i know that he's most likely wasting his time there when the young people are jumping and rejoicing that man will be thinking of his child what is wrong with my child now seasons there are four major seasons in a man's life the seasons in every man's life is broken into four 25 year circles please listen there is the morning stage of every man's life this represents the first 25 years of your life whether you are prepared or not the first 25 years of every man's life represents the morning stage this is the stage where you can make mistakes and go life scot-free. Life will forgive you. There are certain things that should have happened to your destiny at that stage. By the time you are 25 and certain things have not happened, time is already against you. According to God's expectation, by 25 years, you should have found Jesus Christ. You should not be loitering around hoping to guess what salvation is. No. By 25, you should be filled with the Holy Ghost. By 25, you should have mastered the keys of the kingdom. By 25, you should have built strategic destiny relationships. There are many people who got born again at 30. You are already five years behind schedule of seasons. Someone of 18 years can be playing with his life. You who is 35 years, you are joining him to play. Who is foolish? That person can play around with his life and repent later on and still walk within the 25 years. You, that time has already gone. You don't have that time again. First 25 years of your life is a time for massive investment in your spirit, a prayer bank, word bank. That is the time to have a track record of commitment to God. The next phase of your life is called the afternoon stage. The morning stage is the stage of learning. The afternoon stage is the stage of execution. Represents the next 25 years of your life from 26 to 50 years. That is not the stage of rehearsal. If you are still learning at that stage, you are behind time. You are merging two seasons in one. That means you need an extra grace from God. I'm saying it because there are many people. God is telling you that right now. You miss the first 25 years of your life. You are in the second 25 years. But you are still carrying over. The, the first 25 years. It means you must pray more. It means you must invest more time. An old man of 60 years is sleeping. You too you are sleeping. Are we learning something tonight? The stage of execution. Do you know in this nation, there are people who became presidents in their 30s across the world. Is that true? Jesus Christ. Oh, I love Jesus. Look what he was doing at age 12. You now understand? Because he knew that destiny is measured in time. At age 12, when his contemporaries were running around and managing the pressures of teenage what do you think jesus was doing he was at the temple with those who had gone ahead redeeming the time when his parents came to drive him he said do you not know i should be about my father's business that is a 12 year old child for the next 18 years we do not hear of jesus again the next time he shows up is a 30 year old man prepared with stature and in three and a half years, he finished his assignment and signed it. Till today, nobody has been able to produce that kind of result. 30 years. Imagine someone who gets born again at 45. The time it will take you to know the Holy Ghost. The time it will take you to find a Bible-believing church. The time it will take you to learn the principles of the kingdom. Is God speaking to us? So the second season of your life, the season of execution, walking in the fullness of purpose and your assignment from 26 to 50. The third season in your life 
is called the evening stage. This is the stage of legacy where at this point you are not trying to prove a point again. It is expected that within that time, that time of your life, the afternoon stage, like the sun shines brightest in the afternoon. That is the stage of maximum kingdom impact. By the time you are 51, down to 75, is a stage of legacy. That's when you begin to build institutions that reflect your value. Institutions that are prepared to outlive you. You are not successful until there is a generation that becomes loyal to your thoughts. You cannot mark your script and give yourself a grade. It is one generation that will tell us whether you are successful. Our success is proof that Jesus succeeded. It is the success of your children that show whether you succeeded. No matter what you are enjoying now, you are still a student. It is when someone comes, who, is, who comes out of you and now succeeds, that is when we will know you have succeeded. Is God helping us tonight? Yes. The stage of legacy. That is the stage where you turn back and begin to mentor and build the generations coming. Teaching them from your mistakes. Passionately pouring your heart and telling them when you get here, even though it does not look like there is a hole, jump it. I didn't know this when I was there and it cost me 10 years extra. Hear me? There are young people today who are sleeping 8 hours in one day. Let me give you an advice. If you sleep 8 hours out of 24 years, by the time you are 30 years, you've slept for 10 years of your life. Sleeping for 10 years at age 30. Can I tell you the honest truth? I say this with every sense of respect to everybody, but particularly to the young people. Be careful with this overseeking comfort at an early stage in life. We have a generation that is so passionate about comfort. At age 20, you are already looking for, I don't, don't, I don't want anything that pushes me. Hi. You read the Bible for two hours, you sleep for four hours. I can't go until there is a car that moves me around. You have to be careful. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. Jesus himself said it. For the night cometh, even for Jesus, where no man can walk again. There are people today who had an opportunity to have built estates, and build buildings that they and their children and their children's children will eat from but selfishness and distraction did not allow them to know they were getting old lo and behold they opened their eyes and now they are 60 70 years and not even a single building of residence i'm not being sarcastic forgive me but i have to teach this and many of us young people, we spent our lives criticizing men of God, criticizing parents, criticizing politicians, forgetting that we are also coming to that same stage. Many of us are right here and we are messing up even more than those that we criticized. Because the time it takes to prepare is the same time it takes to criticize. While you are criticizing and talking about others, time is still moving you forward prepared or not one day the curtain will be opened is God speaking to us now the year of legacy and the final stage of your life the last 75 years is called the stage of rest not death rest if you started this journey completely at 75 you should almost be ready to finish your assignment only consolidating and blessing the name of the Lord. There are few people who were able to demonstrate that in their lifetime. One of them was Billy Graham, a man who finished his assignment and was still alive to turn back. Everyone knew that this man had finished his assignment. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream is a lesson for everybody alive that seasons are changing seasons are changing 
seasons of opportunity will come now let us look at joseph's advice i have to run i wish i had time to walk this genesis 41 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants 38 and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this is in whom the spirit of god is and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to my word shall all my people be ruled. Thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. He took his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Now, you know that the season just changed for Joseph. Forget about the season for Egypt. Joseph's season just changed. Yesterday, you were a young man who would need to beg for water. But God took you on the seasons for helping interpret seasons. Your own season too has changed. But Joseph make sure you follow your own advice first because that law also applies to you he took off his ring put it on joseph's hand arrayed him in vestures of fine linen put a gold chain about his neck our generation called this i don't know what the ara have arrived that's it there ladies and gentlemen that is that deceptive demon of arrival there i have And he made him to ride on the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt 44 and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand my goodness everybody say seasons ah did Joseph know that one day his bones they would take out of Egypt Look at a man who is receiving a public global commendation. I am Pharaoh and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Read on please. And Pharaoh, he called Zaphnath Pania and he gave him a wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt let's go to okay we'll read down to 49 and then we'll jump to 53 just to redeem time joseph was how old please talk to me how old was joseph why do you think the bible would add his age what do we need his age to do to know the reality of seasons he was 30 years old when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land, all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, he laid up in the same last verse and then we'll move to 53 and joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering for it was without number go to 53 and the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of egypt were ended seven years of plenty can end seven years of plenty can end seven years of plenty can end next verse and the seven years of death began to come according as joseph had said and the death was in all the land and in all the land of egypt but in all the land of egypt there was bread uh-huh and when all the land of Egypt was famished, 
the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, go to Joseph. Go to the person who has the formula for connecting seasons. Go to that man. He's mastered how to preserve bread regardless season. Let me tell you this. When you see people whose results don't change and it looks like they are ever rising, it's not because this law does not happen. They have followed the advice of Jacob, of Joseph. Of Joseph. So even when there is famine, there is still rainy season in their life. And you are wondering, is this rainy season universal? No, they created their own Goshen out of Egypt. Are we together now? Yes. When the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light, it says it because there is an advantage of the wisdom of Joseph to the saints. So what was the advice of Joseph? Very quickly, because we have to pray. Is someone learning something? Mm. The advice of Joseph was save and invest. This is not in financial terms at all. Just pay attention. Save and invest. Save what? The first thing to save is time. Not things. You have not really saved if all you save are things. The Bible says, not as unwise, redeeming the time, the most precious commodity to save and to invest is time. Not things not money if you lose time and you have money you lost record it as a lost if you gain things hallelujah yes. and so his advice was save 20 percent of those seasons and begin to invest those seasons for the days of that the reality that happens to all men you cannot stop the seasons but you can shield and immune yourself to a point that you and all who are connected to you will not even know that this to sustain impact and relevance based on joseph's interpretation of pharaoh's dream i give you a few keys since he said what do you do during these seasons of opportunity that happen to all, there are many of us who are in the heart of that season. Your seven fat cows, your seven fat plants, they are flourishing. But remember that seasons are passing. Let me give you a counsel from the word of God. Number one, the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity is that we use them to build capacity. Your first assignment during seasons of plenty, during seasons of abundance, during seasons of ease, is capacity. Second Kings chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 to 6, this was a story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. Remember, the, it took the union of the vessel and the oil for profits to come. Oil alone does not give profit. It is oil with plenty vessels that is equal to profit if you have great oil and small vessel you will still be poor the woman had oil in her house but the vessel was small when you have seasons of opportunity seasons of health seasons of youthfulness seasons where your destiny helpers are around maximize those seasons to build capacity spiritual capacity intellectual capacity use these seasons to build capacity are we learning so that's the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity number one build capacity your prayer life your word life your time with god because you see there are responsibilities that leadership of all sorts will bring into your life that may not allow you the convenience to do certain things with the liberty you had to do before again. Hallelujah. Number two. What do you do with these seasons? The seven, your seven years of abundance your seven years of fatness the second thing you do is build 
quality relationships. Build quality relationships. That's what we do with these seasons. Build quality relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please. Let's hurry up. We'll read from verse 9, 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Build relationships. Here's what the Bible says. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So the two people must not be lazy. The Bible says two of them have labor. Is that true? It says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Uh -huh. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Twelve. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Can I tell you? During your seasons of plenty, your seven years of plenty, that is the time to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, bring destiny relationships to my life. Bring quality people who love me because of me. Quality people who are not just looking for money or titles. Our world is full of people who will prey on you and climb you like ladders to where they want to go. You need quality people. Can I tell you this? Woe betides a man who is full of men but does not have relationships. How many people today have stepped into their dark days and their dark moments and there's almost no one. Look at Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus. When Jesus was on his way to God, got a question. Where were all the people who received miracles from his crusade? Those who ate 5,000, um, 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 five loaf and two fish, where were they? Where were all the women who were singing his praises? Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Where were even his disciples? They ran away. Paul so ran away. Paul called a small girl woman because he was running away from Jesus. I mean, Peter. Peter. You look like you have no 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 i've not been with him it was only john that stayed when jesus was on the cross do not let circumstances choose your relationships choose your relationships with understanding sit down with the word and with the spirit of wisdom and ask yourself what kind of destiny do i desire Ah, woe betides any man when you are in moments I've taught you this about relationships that you are in dark days and seasons in your life and there is nobody to call you to say I hear you just lost this election but we are standing by you we love you genuinely I hear you just lost money one billion naira just disappeared can I tell you if you need food provided I am alive your children will not beg for food I will keep paying their school fees till you recover can I tell you not everybody is greedy there are sincere people they, they are hard to find but pay the price to find them let me ask you an honest question the first time I taught this message I asked that question and I want to ask it now is there someone right now as you're looking at me is there someone in your life you can honestly call for help no matter what time of the day or night and they will get up and respond to you if you don't have such a person your life is in danger now i am telling you apostle i am uh, what they call that thing where people like you um they like you uh, oh dear i can't remember it now no no it's not photogenic photogenic is camera yes yes psychophants i there's something in me that makes everybody like me think again let me tell you think again men are selfish when you look like a ladder you will see many of them let them just see you looking like a ladder and here they come ready to climb messlessly there are many of us here right now the reason why you are almost dying of depression is because there is nobody in your life who can stand and say let's pray i came to spend the whole weekend with you because i hear you were bereaved i canceled all my programs and you say why did you do that 
because of love to let you know there are still genuine people genuine people are scarce they are like gold pay the price to find them early is someone learning now i tell you if you have the wealth of men genuine men who love jesus and love you you are wealthy indeed yes there are people today who may not have connections they may not have educational qualifications but god has honored them with the gift of men they can call and say please i don't mean to insult you but there is someone who is sick and they say for you i'm on my way coming do you know your name can be a key or a padlock your lifetime is what decides it there are people today who have changed their names because if they ever tell people they are carrying that son name they'll say which one mention the name again that other one where was he in 1971 to 1975 oh he walked with railway go out of my office and you you just refresh a painful wound and something that was a key becomes a padlock i forbid your name from becoming a padlock Is someone learning tonight? Yes. Build relationships. Powerful relationships. I may not have the school fees to pay for my child. And someone says, over my dead body, I remember what you did for me in 1981. And I vow that for as long as I'm alive, there are people who have gone to be with the Lord today, but they went to be with the Lord smiling because they saw people standing before them that they knew will make sure their children don't cry. And they say, I will live in peace because I know that someone will be there to defend me. There are people who it's not the fear of death that makes them cry. It's the fact that they know that if, they, if, they, if their breath ceases today, they will shred their entire names and their families into pieces. Please like what I'm sharing. I'm teaching you by the Spirit. This is what we gain when we come to the house of God. So, all the people you are insulting in your office because you have money, all the people you are insulting around for us young people who are insulting fathers insulting everybody i give you a i don't know if it's a good or bad news but it's a news a serious news that one day one day you will reap from that seed you are sowing there are people today who are not supposed to have certain jobs but just because they mention this you know this man let me tell you in so 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 years and a job interview becomes a long story and after you talk to the person you say by the way where are you staying says i honestly as i'm i just came to abuja i don't even know the name of the area where i am and the person says go and get him a place at my cost and you see the person and say i hope you are doing things correctly say i'm reaping from the benefits of someone's relationship be careful how you treat people be careful how you treat people be careful how you treat people. One day the person you are looking down on, you will open the door of an office and see him sitting down. And he will say, welcome, you can be seated because from here you are going to prison. Straight. Straight. Give him minerals. As soon as you are done, you are going to prison straight. I know we are laughing, but I hope we are hearing what God is saying because God is speaking. There are many people today who are surrounded by men and women who can help them. Can I tell you, when you find out that a man is close to many helpers and yet nobody's helping him, don't be too quick to conclude that the helpers are bad people. Ask questions. What happened? What happened? Why are you surrounded by people who can open doors for you and yet everyone ignores you? Could it be that you are reaping the harvest of the seeds you so gallantly sowed. I made up my mind that I do not want in my lifetime. Let it never be that one day you mention Joshua Selman and someone says, no, I intended blessing you, but now that you have mentioned this name, walk out of here. No. 
politicians one day you will not be in that office men of god whether jesus comes or you meet him in any case you are going to move that for sure father mother the baby you now treat anyhow will be the one to take care of you in old age when seasons change young boy learn to be responsible now they will not give you money any every day a day will come your father will say at your age i was already out go out of my house now and prove make full proof of your ministry maximize relationships are we learning so i i i asked a question that was what led me into this discussion is there somebody in your life today who you can call and he can stand with you in prayer is there someone in your life today who you can open the secrets of your destiny and still go back and sleep with two eyes closed that you can tell the person our family is going through an attack now and the person says over my dead body as for me and my my wife and my children be sure that we are awake praying for you we will pray till breakthrough comes they will pray as if it's their own child that is going to hell do you have such people in your life woe betides a man who is alone when these seasons come the bible the bible gives us a very interesting rendition there's no time for that now to to check that but you would have read about a man in scripture who heard that his boss was going to drive him away when he heard that his boss would drive him away he called all the people who were owing the boss how much do you owe let me reduce something M note my face note my face and when the boss drove him he called them and said where are you people i scratched your back yesterday oh yeah my back is scratching me now <laughs> Even though the reason for relationship should not be selfishness. It should be that you love them genuinely. You have to go and pray this night. And say, Lord, give me the gift of destiny, covenant friends. I'm tired of general relationships. Oh, really? You don't have a child? Two years, no child? I'm fasting and praying with you. We are getting into this together no no don't worry i'll handle my no way when people love you just because of money or anointing or position and most people will that's the that will be the basis can i tell you this when people are clapping for you before you receive it look well who is clapping because some people are clapping for themselves through you Oh, I'm happy that my money bank is still alive. You are healthy. Are you okay? Because I'm about to ask you for school fees. There is a building project that is going on. I can get you Panadol. I can sow a seed. Are you all right? What they are saying is my project, my fundraiser, are you alive? The day they roof that house, if you like, die on that day. And many of us need to be discerning because just because people laugh and celebrate you, you draw them to the holy of holies of your destiny. No. Put a strict spiritual immigration officer around your life. That before you move from outer court to inner court, you must pass that test indeed. From inner court to the most holy place. Just because you meet someone and the person loves you, I said, my God, Apostle Joshua Selman, you preach so powerfully. In five minutes, you've told them everything about your life. Just to let you know that, in fact, my mother is a witch. It's an issue we are still dealing with now. Who asked you? Look at just five minutes. And I'm, are you aware that that shoe I even wore, I, I borrowed it? Come, in fact, let's sit down. And for five hours, you are by the side of your bed discussing things. And the person laughs until two, two weeks later, you find out that the person was actually looking for your enemy. It's just that he came to you. And now you open up several things about your life to your peril. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom let people qualify for access to your destiny don't open up the gates of your destiny to just everybody love everybody but don't relate with everybody no 
association is not by force choose it with respect to God's agenda and your destiny are we together and beware of people who want to be your friends without changing their values be careful if you come to my house and the protocol is to take off your shoes you take off your shoes you see that there are people who want to come with their shoes and sit this is just a parable not doesn't mean literally if I come to your life and I find out that your priority is Jesus I must honor Jesus and it must remain so I cannot want to create an exemption and yet want to be close to you it doesn't work that way beware of people who do not respect your values and yet want relationships with you they may be sincere but they are dangerous people so number one what do you do with seasons of abundance build capacity number two build relationships number three what do you do during these seasons selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives the third thing you do with these seasons of opportunity your seven years selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives we see this in the life of david we're about to pray first samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2 please first samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says david therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of adulam and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it they went there to meet him this was when david was running away from saul look at the caliber of people who came to david and everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented they gathered themselves unto him and he became captain over them and they were with him about 400 men can you imagine the level of selflessness it takes to be captain over these people you are you can't expect anything in return from these people people who were distressed people who were in debt people who were already disenfranchised and now he became captain over them by the time we get to second samuel chapter 23 second samuel please chapter 23 from verse 8 second samuel 23 from verse 8 their names are changed they were no longer weak men these be the names of the mighty men whom david had david turned weak men who were in distress weak men who were almost in debt and he transformed them by selflessly investing in them until their names changed to the mighty men that David had. The Tagmonite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. Watch this. It says the same was Adino, the Esnite. He lifted up his fare against 800 whom he slew one time. What mighty men. Next verse please. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo, the Ahohite. One of the three mighty men with David when they defied the philistines that were gathered together to battle and the men of israel were gone away next verse please the bible says he arose and smote the philistines until his hand was weary and his hand claved to his sword and the lord wrought great victory that day and the people returned after him only to the spoil watch this next verse please and after him shammah the son of agi the hararite it says and the philistines were gathered together on onto a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils and the people fled from the philistines we are reading to 17 watch this but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the philistines and the lord gave him great victory remember who they were before look what david turned them to become and three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time in the cave of Adullam and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in a hold and of the garrison of the Philistines in Bethlehem. And the Bible says David long and said, watch this, ah, it's good to raise men. David said, oh, that I would drink of the pool of the waters 
of the well of Bethlehem, which is at the gate. And those who he had raised said, what did you say? You said you are thirsty. You want water from Bethlehem. Watch this. And the mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David said, you've killed too many people. What warriors? What did I make you become? Don't expect loyalty from anybody you did not invest in. Don't appear in people's future and claim a stake in their lives. There are many people today who have not invested in building anybody. You just gather successful people and you want to claim their lives. No, sir. If you were there during their dark days, they will remember you in glory. There are politicians who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are men of God who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are parents who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. May you get it right. Every opportunity God gives you, invest in someone. Some of them will ignore you. Some of them will turn back. Don't worry. You will always find faithful people. Say, we remember, we have pledged our loyalty. Just because you are thirsty, they will pull down with people of leadership. Visionary leaders do not maintain followers. They turn those leaders, those followers to leaders. And like Dr. Miles will say of blessed memory, they will now turn the leaders into agents of change. Can I tell you this? Do not allow a generation pass without having your investment represented there. Some of these children that many of you see and push them in a bit to look for Joshua Selman, they are the next apostles you are pushing. Mighty men. It is my passion that God will think for yourself. I'm raising you for myself. That's already selfishness. That you invest in people selflessly. Can I tell you this? They may ignore you for a while. But the reality of your investment will bring them. One day they will realize that not everybody is that selfless. For someone you can start with your children. There are many people or bad. They land them outside. So those they are close to are those who fed them. Intellectually and spiritually and otherwise. Mm. Can I tell you this? No matter how anointed I am, no matter how blessed I am, if I go to someone today in the generation of our fathers like Baba Deboe, even if I remove a human head and fix it back as a miracle, they will thank me, but they will be on their way to redemption camp because that is the voice that grew with them. The key to transgenerational relevance is don't just impact a generation. Grow with that generation. Grow with that generation. Laboriously invest in the people. They may not reward you, but invest sincerely. A day will come when the presidents of nations will be people who are fruits of your apostleship. Impact them sincerely and watch them grow. Their honor and their lifting is what will keep you up. God does not throw people. He lifts people. Everything lifted is lifted because it is connected to the ground. No matter how high a skyscraper is, it does not float. Anything that floats in the air will come down. Number one, build capacity. Number two, build strategic destiny relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives apostle boy you are just talking you don't know how many children are brought to my house to raise almost 90 percent of them have become ambrobas don't worry you will reap what you sow not where you sowed you can sow in nigeria and reap in us it's still your harvest one child among the many who will do well will be equivalent to 100 children Hallelujah. Invest in transforming as many. I heard a man of God say this. It is better to be kind than to be right. There are many times you will need to prefer kindness than being right. The pressure to prove you are right, it is nobler to pursue kindness. There are times you are wrong, but you are right, but you will still fail. 
Right does not always mean success. Right does not always mean victory. But kind will always mean victory. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The final thing and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. What do I do with my seasons of abundance? Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Did I give you a title for tonight's teaching? The law of seasons. You may want to write that down. The law of seasons. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Every time I have the honor of speaking to any of our fathers or mentors or senior people, whether in ministry, in life, who have gone ahead of me, I don't approach them as Apostle Joshua Selman. I go there like a sponge, like an ignorant person ready to learn wisdom. And my goodness, sometimes in five minutes, they will tell you something that will define the next 10 years of your life. Let me give you an advice. When you stand before greatness, don't contribute. Listen. When you stand, don't go and stand before people you know. They are all billionaires, respectfully speaking. You may not have anything yet. I'm very quick. You are, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's not First Bank. It's um, um, Access Bank. How much do you have? Just keep quiet whether you are right or wrong. Listen and learn. You stand before senior fathers of faith. And they are, no, no, no. You made a mistake. It's Acts chapter 2. I just read it. Whenever you stand before greatness, minimize contribution. Be a listener. It is the secret of receiving from the great. Sometimes what they will say, they may fail in statistics, they may misquote scriptures, don't worry. Adaptation is proof of honor. Just endure. Be looking for what they are saying that can bless them. Mama, how were you able to raise 11 children and the least among them is a professor today? Mama may not be able to speak English. Endure. Just listen to what she's saying. There is a formula that through the frailty of our communication will drop to your hands. When you receive it, you can change the people. Can I tell you this? Every time results are consistent, it means they happen by laws. Consistent results are proof that you have gained mastery. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. What is the conclusion? Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 27. The Bible says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. There is timing. Every time is not the most convenient time. Now listen to me. You see the reason why we pray for things like restoration and things like speed because by default there are people whose seasons are already against you but these systems of advantage come by the spirit to help you remedy many of you right now your seasons of glory are almost changing but you did not build capacity the time you should be spent praying you were criticizing and talking about people the time you should be fasting and building energy in the spirit now they have made you the pastor of a parish in two weeks you have no messages again because the 10 years of preparation as an usher the 10 years of preparation as a a sanctuary keeper it was not about sanctuary keeping it was preparation but you ignored it because your eye was looking at the stage and the preparation that should happen within that season there are many clerks today 
who are governors in disguise but rather than learning they are complaining my boss is a greedy man he gives everybody 10 10 million men of god come and he gives them 50 million i am here cleaning and god is saying you will remain a clerk there because of that evil heart someone can be cleaning and saying let me listen to the advice when you become a governor be a responsible person and the clerk hears it and writes it down and someday god says you have passed the test hear me every time god gives you an opportunity to serve he gave you an opportunity to learn don't waste it you will not always be a student one day you will be a lecturer yourself but make sure whilst you are a student you look beyond the lecturer's limitations and learn what you need to learn i thank god for today for the lessons and the privilege and the opportunities that he granted to learn some of the people who god used to teach me were harsh people some of the people who god used to teach me were, i mean they, it was as if they were mising the information can you endure so that you will learn and be built There are many of you you need to see a man of god for instance maybe your pastor or someone and five minutes you say they are wasting my time you put your hand in your pocket what are you doing oh i just started a walk and i just need a blessing or one or two words of advices you won't rise that way already that state qualifies you to remain like that i aspire to be a politician i hear that there are some senators around and let me just hear you know these men are even dull they just rig the election they don't have anything to say and god says look at the kind of heart that wants to be governor one day can i tell you this learn to honor everyone ahead of you they didn't get there by luck just because you don't understand how they got there when you see consistent results respect it even if the persona of the individuals is not inviting endure some of them are your parents some of them are your loved ones endure A woman who may have been say for instance a widow for 30 years and yet none of her children has begged for bread and you sit down with one child and you are struggling and she says can i advise you hey, mama you are old school you don't know what to say 30 years you've heard me say it i'm both old and new school it depends on what you are talking about sometimes this idea of new school old school is why people go down it says remove not the ancient landmark don't change what works. Are we together? Now. I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The season you now are in, no matter what you think about it, that season will not remain like that. Your victory will remain, but seasons change. If you obey the advice of joseph oh man of god politician man woman your season can always remain rainy and bright but just because egypt has food does not mean the whole world have food it was one man's advice that kept them to the point that even jacob although he was a prophet hunger drove him to egypt because even as a prophet, he was not discerning to know. There are parents today who can go to be with the Lord with joy. Because they took advantage of the seasons before them. And they built something worthwhile. To the young, you have time. Look for wisdom. To the old, you have wisdom. Please don't die with it. Let the young receive when god wants to help young men he takes the wisdom of the old and adds it to the time of the young that's how he blesses them apostle but i've made so many mistakes in my life and it looks like time is gone no time is not gone even if you are abraham god is able to make time be restored now you see the relevance of the statement and i will restore the years apostle i am now 45 years as a man of god i'm still learning the fundamental rudiments of me of ministry 
that I should have learned when I was 18, 19. Fear not. The Holy Ghost can accelerate your journey. Apostle, I just got born again when Koinonia started. Where do I start from? All my children are now teenagers. How can I help them? God can help you. That's why he sent us. We represent the past that you lost. We have come as God's instrument of mercy. Apostle, I lost 30 years and God says you have gained it back. Now, you may not be able to do anything about yesterday, but you can begin today to be intentional about your life. Intentional about everything you are doing. Some of you who are in ministry may need to take a break and go and settle down and learn how this thing works rather than shadow boxing and repeating mistakes and failures forever. The moment you find out that your life is not producing consistent results, do not be ashamed to stop what you are doing and learn. Some of you right now, you are hearing me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Do not be ashamed to go back to the school of the Spirit and learn. You still have time to learn. Apostle, I'm a pastor. God has called me to be a prophet. But I don't know anything about the prophetic. And I'm there misleading people. Find strength, dear brother. Find strength, dear sister. There is still a way. There are many of you who are crying because you have lost seasons. Can I tell you this? You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. But you can do something about today. There are some of you, whilst you are sitting right now, you should go back quickly and look for a further certification quickly because you have two more years left. Don't allow that door to close. Don't allow mediocres to flatter you and say you are all right. Remember your destiny is with kings. Joseph, you are only in the prison for a while. Don't get the prison life put you down. There are men and women of God who need to go for a retreat. All this exposure everywhere. I am a man of God. You need to go down and say, Lord, what is the next 10 years of ministry going to look like? Just because you were relevant yesterday does not mean you will be relevant tomorrow. There are politicians that need to go to God. Lord, show me the blueprint. What is Nigeria going to look like in the next 10 years? What are the secrets of relevance for the next season? And God says, I have told you, call on to me. Hear me, men of God. In the next five, ten years, the dynamics of ministry will not be the way it is right now. Sincerity will not be the only key you need. You need to hear the voice of his majesty telling you this is going to be the way ministry will be like. Businessmen, you may be doing well today, but the next ten years will not be the way it is now. Life is in circles. You must master the circle of your season. And then... The moment you are in a season of greatness, build capacity, build relationships, raise men, follow the great. I give you four unbeatable keys. You walk with these keys by the spirit, whether you are in your rainy or dry season, as for your victory, it will remain untouched. Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Let's minimize movement, please. We're almost done. Thank you for your patience. In one minute, I'd just like you to reflect on everything I've said. Outside, inside, following online, all through today's service. The Lord has come with his word of power and word of grace, speaking wisdom to our hearts. The Bible says the laws of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Have I wasted seasons in my life some of you are about ending a dry season now you wasted the rainy season until the dry season revealed that you wasted it i told you every dry season comes with a letter from the rainy season i'm coming back some of you god is about to give you another chance with life and destiny can you make up your mind oh samson you lost your hair you lost your eyes but once again the power is coming again make sure you do not make the mistake of yesterday turn your contemplation into a prayer right now lord show me mercy and help me to maximize the seasons of my life
to maximize the seasons of my days is someone praying some of you the seven lean cows have eaten up the seven fat ones but god is giving you another dream oh pharaoh god is giving you another dream and he has sent his joseph to give you the interpretation oh king the dream that you have seen is one you saw it twice because it is established build capacity during your day build relationships during your day raise men during your day follow successful people in the kingdom follow those who have paid the price to 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 put a a, 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 a track record of consistency please pray some of you may need to ask god for forgiveness and mercy lord i repent for insulting the credibility and the track record and the and the and the consistency of those who have gone ahead of me now i am in their shoes and i see someone pray pray for these four keys in your life please pray them in one minute lord i reject laziness you may pray i'm still a young man hard work does not kill diligence does not kill I receive grace to burn the candles in the night i receive grace to buy the books and study i receive grace to submit to mentorship i receive grace to be diligent to build capacity is the oil and many vessels that equals profit it is the oil and many vessels that equals profit even if the oil is genuine and the vessels are small profit will not come pray lord bring strategic destiny relationships to my life connect me to genuine destiny relationships relationships that build that i will draw from in the days and the times of need can you pray for the grace to raise men lord let me not only be a receiver let me raise men even if your children let there be someone today who can say thank god i can eat because someone raised me thank god i am great are you praying don't waste your political office don't waste your office dear man of god it is not the cars you are buying it is not just the anointing you have it's not just the clothes you are wearing the man you are raising is your real world hallelujah listen i know many of you are crying i want you to go back listen to this message again everyone please just take it as a spiritual instruction go back go back to youtube listen to it the law of seasons and listen to it praying and find the areas where you are already making mistakes because for every one of us here the dream of pharaoh must happen to you you will have seven years of plenty and you will have seven years where the lean cows will eat up the great ones you will not always have that person give you money every week now that you are getting the money every week make sure you save and begin to do something reasonable in your life you will not always have a free access people just give you access one day it will not be as easy as this i remember years ago i used to tell my beloved precious people in zaria they are following connecting by faith and I used to tell them those days, my dear people, I love you with all my heart. Listen, one day you will not have it easy like this again. I used to draw me to say, now that you have the chance, ask the questions, learn, receive the impartations. Some paid attention, some didn't. Seasons have changed. 
when you make the same mistake twice it means there is a deficiency of wisdom when we make mistakes once it's called our humanity when we make mistakes twice it's called lack of wisdom for some of you i'm about to pray that's why i said no movement there is a prayer i want to pray for you this is where the power of god comes into place some of you the clock has shifted if you have to wait until it goes round, by the time it comes back you may be 70 years the prophetic is able to take it back again and say lord give me another chance you gave me three men of god three millionaires godly siblings and i wasted that opportunity take the hands back again and give me a chance i will be wiser this time you gave me someone who was willing to send me to harvard to go and study and he said think about it as though they charmed him i wasted that season right now i'm even looking for money just to do a three-day course and i don't have it lord would you send such helpers again now i am wiser lord you brought all kinds of anointed men to my life i wasted the opportunity with familiarity and dishonor can you please bring them again one of the most powerful scriptures in the bible is that an adam knew his wife again again means another chance some of you here hear me our time is gone but this will be one of the most powerful message you would have heard you were connected to great business partners but you did not have the patience to learn rather than learning their values and their virtues you were looking for money all the discussions today you would have been a very strong person i'm sorry to say it, please don't feel bad there are people who had the opportunity to own lands in hectares in this abuja they were in this city where land was one million five million till today they don't have a plot There are ministries that had opportunities to buy acres of land. Don't always say tomorrow is there. Remember the dream of Pharaoh. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream is both a warning and a roadmap. The ease you have today may not always be so until you program it through your obedience. I want to pray for you. I really came here tonight with a strong burden. I've not, as, as I'm standing here, I tell you before the Lord, it's only God, is by the strength of the Lord I'm standing here, but it's the passion from my heart. Because I knew that necessity is laid upon me. If I do not teach this, some of you are in an injury time in your destiny right now. Just because nothing has happened yet does not mean nothing will happen. You can choose to correct it this night. Or you can sit and say, it does not matter. Nice preaching. Rema, preach preacher. And then the seasons will catch up with you. Apostle, I had an opportunity when I was put in an office. In that office, it exposed me to relationships. I insulted everybody. And I said, don't worry. Now the person who was sweeping outside is now the owner of a big real estate company somewhere. I cannot even go and tell him, help me, because I'm ashamed. Believers, we must be wise. We do not have every time to live on earth. Treat people with caution. Treat people with courtesy. Treat people with honor. You may be a wealthy man. Someone may be around you wearing a shoe that looks like he just got it by the roadside don't look down on people because of this and that let me see how much do you have who is your father who is your mother be careful the person who is great has already shown you his future the one who is coming you don't know how far he can become this is why i feel sorry for people who tear down people and criticize you must be careful you hear that a family has lost a loved one don't start arguing and moving around rush there and say how can i help you hear that a pastor is in pain 
don't sit down and be assessing and talking nonsense rush there oh a woman had a miscarriage i've always told them mm -mm. how can i help how can i pray always be there at the point of people's pain sooner or later you will forget what i've preached but you will never forget the experience of this encounter edge yourself in the history of men's rising let them not forget you don't wait until people have arrived and you come and claim a stake in their destiny they will not open the door for you like that when you find hurting people don't ignore them if you cannot do anything then keep quiet but don't add to the hurt someone is trying to raise money for his house rent and you are seeing him do his best all these young boys mm -mm, mm -mm. if you can help help if you cannot help bid him godspeed and walk away do not let people remember you for evil has someone learned something today now that you know these things the bible says happy are you if you do them i pray for you please don't kneel just stand in the name that is above all names for every season that you have not utilized well seasons of opportunity your seven years that you may have wasted either as a result of ignorance as a result of mistakes i call upon the god of my covenant and in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god let there be restoration of seasons for you let there be restoration of seasons for you for many of you strategic relationships opportunities to have lifted you today i call on my god who is your god let there be restoration may god give you another opportunity in the name of jesus christ hear me some of you the lord is ministering to me please listen there are some of you some of your parents are still alive you have never sent anything to them it's just to complain you are a millionaire and mama is there staying in a rented apartment drinking water from the well god is speaking to you whether you like it or not one day they will not be there can you give them the memory of joy and glory before they go to be with the lord can i tell you this use every opportunity you have now because it will not be there the hymn writer says toss will we pass from the earth and its toiling he says only remembered by what we have done thank god for cars but cars will not go with you thank god for qualifications but it will not go with you thank god for reputation apostle joshua selman it does not go to the grave and it does not go to heaven nor hell find the things that matter in this life and commit yourself invest in them and the sons of Issachar men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do again I pray for you anybody who should be in your life in this season but lack of discernment took them out of your life I call upon the God of heaven may they return back to your destiny now every opportunity you lost either due to ignorance or dishonor i pray for you may the god of all grace and all mercy may he restore those seasons for you now you hear me for some of you you are at the threshing floor remember you are at a defining moment a few weeks ago i came with a prophetic word here that people were ending seasons and beginning another one can I tell you this? The grace to maximize this season you are in now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the wisdom and the grace. Receive the wisdom and the grace. Receive the wisdom and the grace. Man of God. There may be certain levels of the anointing you should have had by now. But because of carelessness, like the hair of Samson, I pray for you. 
in the name of Jesus you should have get, gotten into deeper levels of the prophetic deeper levels of revelation deeper levels of prayer deeper levels of fasting but you lost these things in the name of Jesus I pray for you let there be restoration tonight <laughs> hear me those in business were wrapping up some of you lost opportunities God gave you opportunities today you would have been feeding not only your family but everybody around you but you are still at a level where you are begging and time is going I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God leave him leave him just leave the gentleman don't worry let him be I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus may the Lord turn the hands of time for your sake hear me Jacob had an opportunity for an encounter in Genesis 28 he wasted it through lack of discernment he says surely the Lord is in this place and I knew not by the time we get to Genesis 32 Jacob was prepared when that man came he held on to him he said I made this mistake and I paid the price for over 20 years there are mistakes when you make even though you are restored it will take time I pray for you any mistake that will eat up your years any mistake that will eat up the remaining part of your destiny may my God and your God take it out of your life some of you now is the time to seek the Lord you keep laughing at people oh these spirit cocoa people you say now is the time to seek the lord because the time will come when you may not have the liberty to do what you are doing i pray for you whatever has destroyed your spiritual fire and your zeal for the things of god when you were on campus people were getting born again you laughed at them it cost you 10 years now god is giving you another chance don't wait until 20 years from now before you take jesus serious in the name of Jesus, let there be restoration of fire. <laughs> Hear me. There are multi-millionaires today and billionaires. There were times where those people were friends to many of our loved ones. They were giving them free opportunities for mentorship. But they did not listen. And now it's costing them a lot. Some of the bankers, some of the top people today, respectfully speaking, some of them have classmates all around who would have easily taught them but they fail to maximize seasons may god restore those seasons for you in the name of jesus christ koinonia hear me i stand by the privilege of god's grace and i announce to you if there is any season that is about to open up in your life for shame and for destruction by the mercy of god we reverse it now Wave your hands to Jesus and give him thanks. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. I hope it's Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, to Yahweh, Yahweh. Worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, Almighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord, to be glorified. You are worthy, Almighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. One more time.
Please be seated. Just for a few minutes and we'll be upstanding. Shabalaka tapa rato kasiyeda. Jebekete kosada valadosi ana malata. Shabrandos kalabriyatash. Jegete barakosi ada baladaba. Second Chronicles seven verse fourteen. If my people, the first three words, they are my people. So we are not talking of those who are not my people. But if my people, more so they are called by my name, he said they shall humble themselves. He didn't say they shall say, I am sorry. Repentance is not brokenness. Brokenness is deeper than repentance. He says, and shall seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will not heal them. I will heal their land, their territory. Not just heal them, but their territory. The absence of a broken and contrite spirit is for many of us the mystery behind not only the tragedies of our lives, the continued patterns and the reign of darkness over families over territories over individuals that you are a christian is not enough brokenness is a state that god cannot deny what is brokenness brokenness is a state of complete surrender number one number two brokenness is a recognition of your imperfections and your inadequacies outside of the mercy and the help of God. This is called brokenness. A recognition of your inadequacies and your imperfections outside of the mercy and the help of God. Brokenness is a spiritual strategy that God designed to kill pride in the life of men brokenness is a system in the kingdom it's a strategy invented by the wisdom of God to kill pride in men let me tell you this pride is behind the many sufferings of people not sin, pride pride nobody really suffers for being a sinner we suffer because of our pride our parents suffer because of pride it's not their shortcomings it is the refusal to acknowledge that every man is inadequate without God are we together is God speaking to us the power of genuine brokenness it's a strategy that kills pride is a strategy that kills a sense of self-sufficiency one of the greatest unbecoming of believers that sense of self-sufficiency i can do without god i can do without him i can live without him lord when i have a challenge in my life i will call your attention to help me are we together now yes it doesn't mean that god is not involved but you keep him until you feel it is with it is beyond your power then you say lord can you quickly come and just help me and then go back a broken and a contrite heart is a heart that is perpetually living in the revelation that outside of god i am inadequate are we together psalm 34 verse 18 please give it to us psalm 34 verse 18 psalm 34 and verse 18 please read it it's projected one to read the lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart he said and save it such there are certain people that qualify for his salvation the bible says people who are of a contrite heart that's the reason why you can see some persons will come to church are we together they come they don't have faith are we together 
they are not even walking in holiness and righteousness as we know but they come with a genuine sense of brokenness and the whole service becomes about them something about the sincerity of their heart attracted God are we together notice the kinds of people that attracted Jesus in his ministry he, he was hardly attracted by the scribes and the Pharisees he would see the sinners and go to them they caught the woman with the issue uh, with, with, with adultery she didn't argue and said no 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 and Jesus came and helped her remember when he met the woman who had six husbands five and the sixth one was not her husband look at how Jesus took time to reach out to these people let me tell you there is one attribute I know a man can possess that will attract God in a helpless way is a broken and a contrite heart are we together yes that a man can cry unto God from a state of brokenness and say Lord if you do not help me my family will not rise we have broken all the laws of financial prosperity we have broken I'm not a tighter we are not tighters we are not givers Lord if you don't help us we are finished and you will watch the Lord treat them like he treats the lilies of the valley that do not sow neither do they reap yet because they are his creation he will get up and reach out to them in mercy every time people were broken and contrite God responded to them in the book of Jonah there was a strange prophet that God gave an instruction to go to Nineveh and warn them you know why Jonah refused he knew God he knew they would repent he was praying that their, their hardened heartedness would remain so God would punish them for him and he ran away and God drew him back he said go back and the Bible says when Jonah announced that the people broke themselves in fasting and ashes even their animals fasted these were not people who were believers they were not even of the covenant but they became broken every time people were broken God no longer asked them where they came from a broken and a contrite heart the opposite of pride he said a broken and a contrite heart he will not despise let me tell you this when you walk with God we teach these principles your results at a level in the spirit will no longer be based on the accuracy of your applying this principle but that you have come to a place where you have become the friend of God it is important to teach these principles but I submit to you a time will come in your work with God it's no longer about what you are doing you have won his heart in a way and manner that he has become vulnerable to you you will see things you did not pray for you will enter dimensions you did not fast for because you have maintained a state of genuine brokenness the prodigal son left packed his wealth and went to live a riotous life is that true the bible says one day he came to himself that's what must happen to many people in this day one of this fast he came to himself and said come how many hired servants does my father have while i sit down here and die with the pigs what is there to be ashamed of i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and against you and i am not worthy you gave me resources i squandered it in a riotous way the bible says while he was afar off as soon as the father saw him he ran to him notice the father never asked him so where were you all the while a broken and a contrite heart is a magnet for the help and the mercy of God a broken and a contrite heart this is a principle that not only works for God it works for men are we together as wicked as we are as men when you find a man that is broken towards you no matter how hard you are you become as soft as a tissue paper the reason why many of us have lost favor we have lost opportunities we are humans and it is true that at some point you made decisions that was not wise or whatever it is our parents 
you fought with your boss they fired you something happened but we we thought we were repentant but we were not broken you see brokenness has a spirit you can know a man can come and say sorry hey, jimmy please i want to work for you again sorry and you know that this is just this is just apology this is pride on rampage brokenness has a character it's an unashamed acknowledgement of your humanity and how much it can shred you into pieces except god helps you there are people who have gotten their jobs back not because they qualified they came with brokenness there are relationships that have been restored because the individuals could be broken enough are we together there are business connections that have come back because of brokenness listen to what i'm teaching you tonight it's a very deep mystery david was a man who understood brokenness thoroughly 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 isaiah 57 verse 15 quickly let's look at it isaiah 57 verse 15 for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity listen whose name is holy it says i dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to do what to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones there are people who are qualified for revival like a dry and thirsty land as a man of god you have come to your wit's end as a businessman you have come to your wit's end and you come to the lord and say lord i am broken i acknowledge that if you do not help me i cannot do anything and god shows up for you someone can be holding his stick of cigarette under a bridge and just sit down and say god i don't know if you are there but you need to help me it's not like i like my life i'm sitting this way please arise for me brothers and sisters no prayer and fasting no fill with the holy ghost for his spiritual eyes to be open there an angel is sent from heaven and it comes to that person there his brokenness is a magnet he drew the hand of god i have seen god visit families that broke every spiritual law i know learn the laws of the spirit your humanity will necessitate them learn them one of it is brokenness are we together yes david was a man who understood god god don't give me to my enemies punish me by yourself i choose your own way and god said this man this man how many young people have lost the favor of their loved ones because they do not have a heart of brokenness you used to live a wayward life i said now am i not get am i not getting well behaved it's my father not seeing there's no brokenness genuine brokenness i have seen people who are genuinely broken i have seen i have advocated for people who have offended their destiny helpers and i saw the level and the extent of their brokenness i felt guilty leaving them that way i went out of my way to broker reconciliation this is me a man take over jehovah i have come to the end of myself take over jehovah i have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah come to the end of myself so take over jehovah i have come to the end of myself jehovah jehovah i have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
what I'm sharing with you. This is a very powerful revelation. These are the kinds of people that all things work for their good. They know what to do to God to change equations. You will look at them. It is true their family should be cursed. Their father was a herbalist. It's true he slew one of the sons. It is true that an ordinance is speaking against them. And he goes before God. He says, Lord, I, I don't come in my own righteousness. I come before you. Oh God, I never lied that I was a herbalist. I never lied that I collect the charm. It was out of pressure I came before you. Who else will I run to? And God says, who is calling me? Who is call which family is calling me? And while repentance is going on, one devil is there concocting a charm. That man cannot pray in tongues. That man does not even know which scripture should be. He cried and God showed up and said, because of what you have done, I enter a covenant with your children's children that all of them will be the head. And you find out that three generations afterwards, all leaders, not because they fasted, their brokenness was a covenant. Are we together? Show me a man that understands brokenness and I show you a man whose end you will never see. You will never see. I am convinced. Now, and, and I, I don't say this in a state of sarcasm. I say this sincerely. I am convinced that when people fall to a point that their chapter closes, the, a level of pride was responsible for that. Are we together? Hmm. Peter saw Jesus Christ and because of the pressure he ran away and betrayed him it was not a lie when Jesus came to him in John 21 he said little children have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side when they caught fish Peter realized it was Jesus the same Jesus he had betrayed three days ago the Bible says he ran away he said go away from me I am a sinner this is not the issue of condemnation it's a recognition Jesus I did this to you and you still come to me I disappointed you I told everyone I did not know you I took advantage of your benevolence but I come to you and Jesus said, Simon, this attitude has earned you something. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. You qualify to be the leader. This is the kind of attitude that is leader worthy. An attitude that is unashamed before me. There are many proud people moving up and down. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't look for women. I don't look for men. And our pride keeps us there. Every time we see people rolling before God and crying their hearts, we sit down there with a sense of self-perfection, full of our pride, full of our jealousy, full of our lust. Just because it has not yet manifested does not mean it's not there. And when there is an opportunity to cry before God, we sit down saying, "Ah, uh -uh, you mean that lady is also praying wow thank god oh koinonia is helping some people a broken and a contrite heart a heart that is unashamed before god a heart that can roll from end to end and say lord you are the helper you are the coverer you are the defender of my life the psalmist knew this he said, I'm aware that many are they that trouble me. Many are they that look, they pray for my downfall. If you do not understand brokenness, you will fall like a chicken. It will surprise you. Your rising has a side effect to many people. And they hope and pray daily that something happens in your life. And if you understand brokenness, you have held God in a way and manner that he will never leave you. This I know about God. A broken and a contrite. Believers are very proud people. We exaggerate the teachings of faith. We exaggerate the teachings of righteousness. And it makes us proud people. And we cannot tremble at his word. And allow his spirit to walk on us. That's why there is no power. That's why there is no grace. That's why there is no favor. That's why there are no results. A sense of self-sufficiency. Take over, take over, 
I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Brokenness is a mystery that attracts the mercy and the help of God to a man's life. A mystery that attracts the help and the mercy of God. When God is ready to show you mercy, do you know God can help men? How many of you believe that? Do you know God can help men? Ha! There are very few people that have seen the help of God. This is not men favoring you. This is God deciding that I want to help you. I have helped people in my life by the grace of God and I have seen how easy their lives became because I could reach out to them. God can turn to a man and say, me, Alpha Omega, I have decided to come to your family to help you. It will surprise you what will happen. Most of us do not know what the help of God can do. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help not my neighbor's own i don't know how he gets his own but my help you see us like this the name of this ministry is ebenezer a ministry that has been helped by god helped spiritually helped with grace some of these mysteries are not just a product of personal research some of them are a sheer help of god that god comes to you by himself and says i want to help you God can help men. When God helps you, something will change about your life. There are many families that don't help, have the help of God because our loved ones are there in their pride and arrogance. I think we should go and see a man of God. I know God too. And God says, you see? You see it now? A broken and a contrite heart. Let's go and cry to God. Ah, didn't I tell my wife sorry? Didn't I tell my husband sorry? There's no brokenness. Genuineness. Some of us seated here, this is the one limitation that makes Satan to buffet our lives and yet God seems to stand helpless. Everybody say genuine brokenness. Genuine brokenness. That a man can come to a point where he goes to God. I remember a woman who shared her, her testimony, very touching testimony. She was staying in a house, um, a, a, a rented apartment, very wealthy man, you know, somewhere in Abuja. And true story, she could not pay. You know, there was no way, it's not the issue of give me time. There's nowhere money is going to come from anywhere. And the woman was broken because she still had the fees of her children. This woman sent me a text by herself. She said when she, it was very obvious that the boss was, the, the owner was going to drive her, that the woman said she just knelt down before him and said you have children like this one and she was crying she said it's not my fault that my husband died i didn't kill him it's not my fault that i didn't have the opportunity to be educated i'm not lazy it's just condition that has kept me like this if you drive me where do i go to this woman started crying and according to what she told me that the man just kept quiet and looked at her and was touched he said i have children and i have conscience i will never do this he said continue to stay here it's not your own but just continue to say forget about rent because of this thing you have done i've given you this the help you know many of us want to seek help at our own terms pride and help don't go together are you hearing what i'm saying please emeka i hear you're a doctor can you treat me you are the one who is sick oh god are you not seeing what is this family is doing we need five million to solve our problems i come by the blood of the lamb as, as if you, you you ask him to die and in the name of jesus christ pride that's what the bible calls it i watch people all around from pastors to leaders and in all honesty i see that price oozing out desperate for help but not broken enough to receive it there are people who are desperate for help but the brokenness that qualifies them to receive their knees will not go to the ground i don't mean physically their knees will not go to they want to be helped 
but they want to be helped at their own terms sorry do you have 100 naira can you help me it's not by force if you don't have that's all right that's a proud man he's hungry he's in need and he's ashamed it's not my culture to beg i'm, I'm just it's, i just felt like and it's not usually what i do i just hope that you can help me pride those kinds of people never get the attention of god thou son of david thou son of david please thou you are the son of david others call you jesus but i i know what they've been saying about you have mercy i don't know what what it takes to stand up from here and i'm not sure i even have it look at the father of that guy that was convulsing he said help my own belief i don't understand this your faith thing i've done all i know to be faith please if i'm not getting it right if you leave me here to learn faith this child can die before i finish learning it help my own belief and god turned who is this notice how god was helplessly drawn to people who were broken is god speaking to us lord i need your grace and i need your anointing i'm not i'm not coming to act as if we are colleagues lord i'm standing if you give me anointing fine mm -mm -mm, i'm not ashamed i need thee oh i need thee every hour i need thee come bless me now my savior i come to thee i need thee oh i need every hour i need thee come bless me now my savior i come listen when you truly need help don't act like you can do without it are you hearing what i'm saying brokenness is a force it can draw help to you there are many destiny helpers around us but our pride is what stops us from receiving help it doesn't take god anything to change a man's life overnight is this attitude of pride oh promise i hear that um you are an anointed man can you just agree with me i have issues in my life uh, but if you are not if you are free that's all right you expect that anointing to work i'm not talking of human worship is the same way we approach God. We approach God with our pride and our sense of being. This is not condemnation. This is a recognition. If you hear the way I pray for Koinonia to scare you, you will think I killed a human being. Lord, it is by your mercy that you draw people. This afternoon, I just lay down on my bed flat and I'll say, Lord, it is by your mercy you change people. It is your voice that is able to change people. You are the only one who will draw people. I don't take for granted what you are doing. I will never act like I don't need you. And here he comes again. A broken and a contrite heart. What prophecy did you cancel through pride? What prophecy stopped working in your life? Because there was no genuine brokenness. This kingdom thrives on mysteries. I'm unveiling one of them for you. So that you will see. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. You want a new heart? You want to rise in the spirit? It takes brokenness. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. We're we going to pray shortly. Very quickly. It says, a new heart also I will give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart. This is, this is the heart of many of us here. The stony and stubborn heart. He says, and I will give you a heart of flesh. That's the Bible. Let me show you one more scripture. Very powerful scripture I found. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Very solid scripture. Listen. He says, and I will give them a heart to know me that i am the lord i will give you a heart that will make you know me it says and they shall be my people and 
I will be their God. Why? For they shall return to me with their whole heart. They shall return to me with their whole heart. A broken and a contrite heart towards God and towards men. There are nations that would never go for war if their leaders can just admit we were careless, we compromised on the deal. I'm sorry. But millions go hungry and in war because of the pride of one person over my dead body you hear them say many of the yokes that are on our families came because of the pride of one person one person one person one arrogant person no over my dead body and the habali said to me say yes and we grew up in all kinds of yokes of darkness how many people offended a very old woman pushed her down and she said my daughter what did i do leave me alone is it that you don't have eyes to see and the woman looks you say you did this to me your children will do it to you and the foolish girl moves around thinking that it's all about catwalking and many years later her innocent daughters come beautiful wonderful people when a man comes as soon as he says i love you what will happen to him he will leave you by himself that's why God put this. Gen if my people who are called by my name, they are called by my name, but the devil is still beating them left, right, and center. He never said, I don't have the power to save. Are we together? He said, but they shall humble themselves and then pray and then seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Under that condition, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their lands. Go and watch the documentary about Fiji Island. The revival in Fiji Island. That's what happened. Many years ago, missionaries came to Fiji Island and then the people slaughtered the missionaries and killed them. And the missionaries, when they slaughtered them, everything died in that land. The fishes disappeared mysteriously from the sea. It's a documentary you can go and watch. Everything went down. They will plant crops. Locusts will come from nowhere and devour it. And then one time, a group of Christians who had been exposed said, Look, this thing is not just the issue of we are Christians. There has to be a way of making peace. Are we together? In the New Testament, restitution is not necessarily just about going back to go and say oh i stole five naira when i was five years but restitution is a state in the heart a genuine state this our pride in the body of christ is why we don't see the power of god we just jump at anything just because of a little theological study we did here and there and do you know the people in the land came together intercessors began to pray a few weeks turned to months and one time in the midst of that prayer the spirit of prophecy came and he said look you people have to pray this land has taken the blood of those who were bearers of good news and they sat down they prayed and they cried before god they said lord you have to help us and fortunately for them they were able to get in touch with the grandchildren of the ministers they slaughtered and the christian missionary said it's true we have repented but since these people are there can't we reach out to them and they wrote a letter to them and the young people say we are not coming you people slaughtered our grandparents we had the story you didn't even allow us to see their body they removed their head and danced around with them in shrines and eventually the christian organizations called the people and they came and do you know they had it was like a ceremony they made peace they hugged them and the little children say no 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 our parents have died but their blood flows to us and you are repentant we bless you the people who did this thing have long died you shouldn't be the victims of this we bless you it was not up to one week they started seeing fishes mysteriously in the sea the water the vegetation go and read it fiji island 
the the like the president of fiji island officially dedicated the place to god mysteries that people do not know and we cheat ourselves here and there a broken heart show me somebody who has offended god to whatever and can run to god and say lord i come to you show me a man who has offended a human being and can run to the person genuinely remember jesus taught about this in the parable of the servants on just servants one of them went and cried master forgive me and all of that and all of that and they forgave him and then he did not go to make peace with the other one and then they now dealt with him that story was a message that you can run to him and you can cry and he will hear you if my people if koinonia a ministry called by my name shall humble themselves most of us every time we hear this thing we just think it's just for sinners it's for bad people may god knows i've tried that thing is pride is pride when it's time to be broken before god you are broken genuinely lord it is by your mercy it is by your grace i need your help in my life men are getting more wicked i need your help I counseled a dear woman i'm sure she may be here and when i counseled her i saw the kind of trouble she you know as i counsel people my heart reaches to them i've been doing this for years there are cases when you hear you know that only god no matter how well meaning you are you can't help that situation the only and and the way they come to you man of god help me and you too you know that you can't help. it takes it takes only one who sits on god's throne to be able to help Do you believe God can help you? My life is a testimony of a man that God has helped. God can help men. It's a language we don't know. Most of our loved ones don't know it. They believe men can help, but they don't believe God can help. The key is brokenness. Some of those who have received the mercy of God most are some of the most disobedient people. That's what pains some of us. Because you are roommates with them. And you see the way God keeps going out. The moment they are broke, oh Lord, an alert comes. And you are there, you come back from three days dry. Say, Father, I'm still here. Say, you, you will continue being there and you watch. There's no brokenness in your heart. Somebody comes and says, Lord, help me. You know my situation. There are people who God changed their exam scores because of brokenness. They went to God and said, Lord, please help me. I take responsibility. I didn't read. It is obvious that if this result comes out, I have two years. And they rolled before God and cried. I'm not talking of the mystery of a dance. This is not dancing. It's not every time you dance there are times you lie down and cry and god comes to them and all of a sudden the course comes out and you see a something they didn't finish answering question one out of five questions who taught us that god has stopped helping men he said uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped marvelously god can help a man of god and in one month your life and ministry will change god can help a family some of these things we are struggling with it takes god to help us you attract his help one of the things that i believe believers and i say this from the strength of counseling there are two spirits that believers must cry that god should help i know we are humans and i don't mean to condemn you masturbation and pornography two devils of darkness that the devil uses to tear people into pieces it starts from their dreams when something good is about to happen a breakthrough is about to happen there the spirit comes again and you find out that the favor goes then the urge leaves too i'm yours 
I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. Lord, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. Sing it one more time. Lord, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. A broken heart. There are women who the secret to the baby you are looking for is brokenness. I've met every man of God. They prayed for me. I've, uh, uh, brokenness. Carry your medical report. You have five brought here. You have five brought here. You put it on the ground. And let your tears do the praying. Oh God, will you not help me? Oh God, my father served you till he died. He died as a missionary. For the sake of your mercy. Remember mercy. And you are crying and you fall asleep and here comes an angel sent from heaven and he comes to you just touches your stomach and you get up and go to the hospital doctor check me again and they say it's a joke where did you go to the helper the helper showed up in your house koinonia our families need help if we don't humble ourselves recession will punish us to our knees we need help there are families that need to come together and just get down on their knees from the greatest to the least to say lord i am the priest in this home but i'm officially lifting this family we need your help we are broken we are broken see the bible says even a thief when he's caught if the thief tells you i only stole because i was hungry he says pity him bible it, this is the holy god speaking that's why God will look at a prostitute somewhere and we say God condemn her and God looks in the midst of her prostitution what he's seeing is Lord I need help I've been doing this thing for 10 years but I need help and God suddenly sends a very powerful man of God he said that's your wife and you are there saying God this is cheating I've been in church God said well I promote who I can promote and demote any proud person I can demote This is the reason why we are angry at some people's results because it looks like it's not fair god should not help them with the way their lives are but god when your heart is right before god god will surprise you i am a keeper of principles but i can tell you this i have been committed to stand up and help people no matter how stupid they are because of something about their brokenness When you see me pray for koinonia and pray for my own life it, it will irritate you if you are praying with me i don't cry before men but don't be deceived i cry before god with my life i lie down before him and i say lord help me help me are you getting blessed we are going to pray this is what we must engage tonight many of us need to cry on behalf of our proud family members ten ladies no marriage go to the house of god god forbid all that place in that church that they gossip about people god wants to i won't come there i'm i'm too no 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 i won't do that you can stand on their behalf and say lord if you depend on my family's faithfulness you will never bless us lord i'm advocating lord my father is a proud man but i cry for the sake of jesus for the sake of what the lord has done on the cross please step in for my family sickness is eating everyone lord we have broken every rule every law i now know it is true that my father has 10 girlfriends somewhere but lord if you use him to punish us moses knew what to do for israel god was angry he said these guys are in idolatry i will cause them moses said god calm down abba 
are you not merciful and compassionate do you want them to say you brought these people out and could not take them to the promised land and God repented whatever you answer me I surrender this is the condition to see the mercy and the grace of God whatever you ask me whatever you ask of me I surrender. I surrender that's my commitment that nothing becomes too much to release to you whatever you ask of me I surrender, I surrender. Just prophesy it as a song. We are going to pray shortly. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. One more time. Whatever you ask of me, Lord. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Hmm. Whatever you ask of me, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. It's yours. It's yours, it's yours, Lord, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours forever, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Hallelujah. Before you start claiming right, tonight is a night of thorough brokenness before God I'm going to give you the next five to ten minutes alone before we start praying corporately whether it's on your chair just I'm going to leave you alone with God everybody find a way alone with God break your pride whether you are inside or outside this is you are alone with God and say Lord mercy 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 for my family mercy for my finances for my spiritual life Lord, do not judge my family according to their iniquities, for they are many. Lord, do not judge my sisters according to their wrongs. Do not judge my brothers. Lord, if you do not show my mother mercy, there is no salvation. If you do not show my father mercy, Lord, save my territory. They are an idol-worshipping territory. They still worship idols. Have mercy. I come to you with a broken heart. Lord, there are charms in my house right now. I come to you with a broken heart. Pray. Pray. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Lord, I'm yours. Lord, if you depend on my attitude, I will never get married. Lord, if you depend on my prayer life, then I will never see your hand. Lord, if you depend on my faith level, I will never break through in the spirit. But tonight I cry. I come to you with genuine brokenness forever 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 
I will never graduate. Lord, if you leave me to my chance call, I may never get admission. Where is the helper of my destiny? Arise for me. I cry before you. Oh God of Jeshurun, arise and take away the shame of my family. There are times in this kingdom I admit to you where it is not the quality of your keeping the mysteries of the kingdom but your ability to invoke the help of God through brokenness. There are businesses that the people don't know anything about finance. They cried before God and God arose and said, I choose to wipe your tears. There are families who based on the way they train their children all the children should be arm robbers and prostitutes but not one of them is a spoiled child because somewhere along the line the parents had to hold their hands together and say lord help us help us this cry can give you a job i tell you this cry can give you a husband based on the way you are no good man should come to you it's not a lie but the mercy the mercy of God just a few more minutes of genuine brokenness whatever you ask me say whatever you ask of me I surrender if you are not seriously praying you are a non-believer if you are not praying in this atmosphere genuinely then i'm telling you something is wrong with your passion for god lord let the desires of my enemies not come upon me whatever you ask of me i surrender there are many who lie in wait waiting for your family to fail to prove but that God by his mercy can fit you and help you oh God oh as we call on your name, oh God, pour out your mercy as we pray. Oh God, a cry for people desperate for His help. Oh, oh, oh God, as we call on your name. Oh, oh God, pour out your mercy, Lord, as we pray. As we pray. 
as we pray sing as, as we, we pray, pray. to the Lord. As He's pray, coming through for you. As we pray. As we pray. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only I'm seeking you as a precious jewel Not to give up, I'll be a fool You are my only Lord. One more time You are my strength You are my strength You are my strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I see. You are my own Lord. Lord. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Seeking you, you as a precious jewel. Not to give up on me. There I was said I love you. and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love my bible says his mercies are new every morning just one more minute and we'll pray corporately and we're done the lord held the hands of cyrus an unbeliever and prospered him because of the pride of God's own people he gave them over to their enemies it is not the witchcraft in your family that is killing you it is the lack of brokenness that is authorizing the spells to keep working there is a way your repentance can be so genuine the Lord will arise for you by his mercy. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Ah. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Prophesy to yourself two more times. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. One more time. Sing. My deliverer is coming. I want you to arise like one who has touched the heart of God. We are going to engage in some 15 minutes of intense warfare. We are going to pound the gates of hell with faith. We are going to pray and say that accuser of my family. I have, bro I have been broken before God on behalf of my family. He will not lift a railing accusation against my father, against my mother. I come with the spirit of faith. Lift your voice and begin to blast in tongues. The Bible says, even the lawful captive, even the lawful captive, 
Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it in the name of Jesus. I declare that every legal access for accusation, for oppression over my life, over my family, by the mystery of brokenness, I command it broken now. Lift your voice and pray. I silence the accuser over my family. I silence the accuser over Koinonia. The altar that accuses. The covenants that accuse. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that everything associated with my lineage, my family line that the devil is using against me by the blood I silence you hold the hands of your neighbor and pray, pray. I silence you I silence you ordinances handwriting ordinances handwriting by the fire of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are my helper. Say it again. Oh God, you are my helper. I have no other. I call unto you. Show up in my life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Show up. Show up, oh God. By your mercy. Show up for me. Show up for me. Show up for my finances. Show up for my spiritual life. You are my helper. You are my helper. You are my helper. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. One or two last prayer points. And we finish. The Lord has declared that it's a year of signs and wonders. I told you a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it. You are going to say, Lord, turn me. Pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I offer my life. Turn it into a sign. And a wonder pa, lift your voice and pray pa, 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 pa. turn my life pa, 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 turn my life pa, pa, pa. into a miracle pa, pa, pa. with a message on it turn it pa, pa, pa. into a miracle pa, pa, pa. with a message on it pa, pa, pa. turn it into a miracle pa, pa, pa. with a message on it pa, pa, pa. Turn my life to a fearful sign of wonder. Turn my life to a fearful sign of wonder. Hallelujah. The last prayer, and then we'll share the grace. Hallelujah. You notice we didn't take testimonies today. We'll do it tomorrow. So when you come. I expect lots of testimonies will do it tomorrow but we are just starting today we'll just take this prayer point and then we are done tomorrow we can welcome Shut new people and all of that hallelujah say in the name of Jesus everything I have lost in the years past I decree and declare by the power of brokenness return back to my life Open your mouth and pray. Yeah. Everything. Patek and Patopana. A bit of Russia. Everything that was lost. 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 I call back friends. I call back opportunities. I call back graces. I call back mantles. I call back paradises. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. We're still standing. I want you to maximize these times of prayer. Don't only pray when we come together. Are we together? The fire that is burning in this place will be burning for seven days. You can use the time. The sun is hot, but you can look for somewhere. Sit down and pray. I expect this revelation I've shared now. It should last you till evening tomorrow. So you go back and pray it. Wake up in the night and pray it. And curse that devil. When you hear the accuser declare brokenness. Call your parents and tell them help is on the way. Help is on the way. I know you are traditionalists, but help is on the way. Call them. Don't say I'm afraid it will not happen. We are talking about God here. Call them. The helper is on the way. I prayed for you and God is coming.
hallelujah please be here on time and when you come don't come alone this is not you can see that there are people everywhere but you have prayed tonight and you know there are some people who should be praying this prayer drag them and plead with them that this is not a koinonia thing this is god visiting a land bring them this magical manifestation that people want will not work that way you come and engage mysteries and god will bless you we are fasting please fast these children are not too small to join us if they do 6 to 10 it's all right if they do 6 to 12 it's okay are we together now take out time and pray and fast by monday i will give us the keys to the other days and what we are going to be doing but take out time to pray yesterday's message has been uploaded get it and listen to it you can wake up in the night just play this song find a song don't snore your way till morning even if it's 15 minutes in the night maximize the night time get up and sit on the ground and just lie down and begin to reminisce on his faithfulness and begin to prophesy you have to engage this thing to work lift your hands in the name of jesus christ i bless you this is day one already it won't reach day seven before you see the outstretched arm of god in the name of jesus christ some of you already from tonight this was your key for this prayer that you have gotten this key you will command signs and wonders again and again in the name of jesus i pray for everyone who is sick here in the name of jesus be healed right now i stretch my hands as an extension of the hands of jesus and i rebuke every infirmity in your body be made whole right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah every time you see retreats like this are times of feasting on the mysteries of the kingdom feasting on the mysteries of the kingdom you can be zealous in times of dissipating spiritual energy but whether or not you are making impact in the realm of the spirit is dependent on the quality of the insight that guides your prayer it's not just the zeal and the will to pray but the insight that guides the prayer otherwise there are many prayer warriors on earth whose lives should bring forth a level and an extent of christian experience that should defy argument so it's not just in the dissipating of energy but the quality of the insight are we together now so every time the word of god is coming is an opportunity for you to receive the word of god satan has never been afraid of the word of god no satan is afraid of your understanding of it the word of god in itself will not do satan no harm at all so it is this is the most this is the most crucial part of any meeting when the mysteries are about to come because the quality of your results will be dependent on what your eyes see not what you hear are we together praise the lord please be seated for a while jesus thank you it's one mystery per day and the reason why we share it like this is because we want our hearts to be open my assignment is to guide us on a kingdom truth when jesus walked the earth every time he walked with the disciples it was an opportunity for him to unfold something about the operation of the kingdom i struggle very seriously with what i'm about to share because i hope that we will not only appreciate it but it's something that i pray with all my heart that if you grasp the truth that i show you tonight it will change your life in a way that will surprise you if you're with me say amen, amen. tonight i'm sharing on the mystery of strongholds the mystery 
of strongholds second corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 the mystery of strongholds this is a powerful secret of dominion this is a powerful secret of legislature in the realm of the spirit the mystery of strongholds second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 10 and verse 4 when you read from verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh it says our warfare listen carefully this is Paul speaking now one who was granted access Paul called himself a steward of the mystery he didn't call himself a preacher Paul didn't call himself there were people who were called men of God in the Bible an example Elijah an example Samuel Paul never called himself a man of God he called himself a steward of the mystery one who was given access to the mysteries that so that when we listen to him we might be partakers of that fellowship called in a participation to come into an understanding of that mystery and this was one of the mysteries he said for though we walk in the flesh our warfare is not physical listen carefully our warfare is not physical and then he says in verse 4 he says for the weapons of our warfare so warfare is for sure but he's guiding you on how to engage it listen living is warfare prosperity is warfare growth is warfare but he's giving us the character of this he's saying the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god and the entire arsenal is supposed to achieve one purpose to pull down not enemies strongholds what kind of warfare is this that the enemy is not a human being he never said to pull down spirits think about that he didn't even say to pull down demons that this warfare god had to give you the tools to use and he says this fight is not against flesh and blood that the fight is not even against demons not to pull down demons to pull down strongholds <laughs> this is warfare now next verse casting down what spirits demons satan imaginations the greek word yes are and every high thing not high person high thing high information that exalted itself against the person every high thing that exalts itself above another kind of knowledge this is warfare that god gave you these tools please get what i'm teaching you tonight that this fight is not against flesh and blood but that this fight huh god gave you these spiritual tools to pull down strongholds to cast imaginations to dethrone high things and then to bring thoughts strongholds imaginations high things thoughts this is warfare now this is very strange there is no name of a spirit that is mentioned just follow me there is no name of a demon that is announced here shocker even satan is not mentioned here this is paul teaching us a dimension of warfare that is strange the mystery of strongholds are we together that a man's bondage is not necessarily the physical things you see it's not even the spirits that oppress the person 
that when a man is ready to establish victory the focus is not even the spirit entities that are causing these problems but that there is an operation listen jesus is teaching us and this is what he said that human beings are houses and temples god said that demons also say that is that true and the bible says a spirit can live in a man follow me carefully a spirit can live in a man and that there is a possibility of casting that spirit out of a man is that true where does the spirit go to when you cast the spirit the bible says it moves around dry lands everywhere is that true and then it becomes restless what makes it restless then the bible says after a while it will turn back he never said i will go to the body he said i will still go back to my house now question a spirit is somewhere no prayer no prophet no anointing something casted it from there back into a human being that required a man of god to cast it out what made the spirit uncomfortable with an environment that it left on its own without the particular desire of a man to, to drive it think about this if this guy has a demon spirit and i lay hands on him and cast out the demon spirit i thought if the demon spirit is somewhere somebody should be able to drive it back but the demon says on his own that environment without any human intervention does something to that demon spirit that makes it restless the same way a man of god's anointing is driving it and he starts moving back and say it is even better compared to what i am facing here it is better to go back to that human being in matthew chapter 4 you also find that account in luke chapter 4 watch this when jesus went to fast i want to tell you certain things about strongholds and about this we're going to pray but i want there are things that believers that's why i told you i struggle to share what i'm sharing there is a whole series on this that is coming jesus the bible declares that jesus is the embodiment of the godhead is that true and the bible calls him full of grace and truth now jesus goes to fast hey, Jimmy, jesus is fasting and satan is waiting for him instead of the fasting to drive demons the fasting was attracting satan listen <laughs> satan is not afraid of jesus satan is not even afraid of the fact that jesus is fasting this is jesus being the son of god alone should command respect then fasting for 40 days no food no water satan is not afraid then satan comes to jesus looks at jesus jesus is looking at him back i thought satan would be rolling and shouting and moving up and down church has never scared satan the presence of god has never scared satan listen carefully <laughs> just just take it in first like an injection let it enter and settle down then we'll continue in the book of job job chapter one the bible says once upon a time the sons of god went to show themselves to the lord is that true and the bible says satan at that time he had fallen otherwise god would not ask him where are you coming from is that true satan goes before god and he said where are you coming from he said from moving to and fro the earth what location the earth and he says have you considered my servant job and then this is what satan says there was something you put around job he never said job's prayer he never said job's fasting i every time i came to job i saw that there was something that surrounded him that i could not even touch him it made me uncomfortable i could not remain with job and he said take that thing away and watch what how i will rubbish job what was satan's request 
it not make me more powerful not make job more powerful whatever it is and this is what job said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord was upon my tabernacle those secrets built a fortification in the realm of the spirit and the bible says satan came not a demon he came by himself whether job was praying or not the fortifications were there he was a man of prayer he was a man of power satan feared job but he stood before god satan feared job but he went before god and stood he said i couldn't stand before this guy but i can come to stand before you it's your bible i'm, I'm not reading a, a, a it's your bible are you getting blessed and then all of that began to happen and job's life went down and then job's life came back again now watch this in luke chapter 4 let's go back to our text give us luke chapter 4 jesus just finished praying and fasting you are praying now you are fasting is that true in your mind you believe that this praying and fasting you are doing is supposed to drive out all kinds of demons there is only a kind that prayer and fasting drives says jesus our chief mentor and apostle this kind this kind there is a kind because of the nature of their operation that praying and fasting we are fasting together so listen to what i'm telling you now look at how this verse starts please listen jesus comma being full of the holy ghost again then goes to fast i mean he, he returned from jordan and was led of the spirit into the wilderness jesus the bread of life the holy ghost number two fasting added prayer 40 days then let's see what happens after 40 days he was tempted of the devil satan came to tempt jesus that word tempt dear is a very interesting word please follow me and the bible says and he was hungry verse 3 verse 3 and the devil said so this is the tempting now the bible says satan tempted him and the other verses are explaining the content of the temptation are we together how did satan tempt jesus if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread verse 4 and jesus answered satan talked to jesus and was not afraid jesus the word put the word in his lips and was speaking that word did not cast out satan please listen to me i want you to be so powerful and should be so free we have inherited a lot of religion and this is why we keep doing a lot of things and there are no results in our lives listen listen carefully he said jesus said to him answered satan asked jesus a question jesus is replying back remember this is jesus and satan if they were angels they'll say this guy is wasting his time somewhere satan came directly to jesus what makes you think he will not come to you he went to the throne he went to the son that man shall not live jesus said it is written now this one we can we can dwell here forever because this is jesus the word and yet he's saying it is written he didn't say i said he went to scripture it is written the bible says all scriptures were inspired by the holy ghost and jesus still said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and that was him standing man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and jesus is standing and satan is not afraid what was wrong with his confession was it the scripture that was wrong or the person was unholy or the utterance was wrong and satan still stood if you get what i'm teaching you you will know why regardless of what people are doing it looks like satan still remains now listen this is even the fearful part temptation number two satan take it him up how did he do it satan take not the baby jesus 
Jesus who had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost Satan told him come and he took him into a high mountain now this is the fearful part and showed him all the kingdoms of the world just flash like that and then here was Satan's proposal look how shameless Satan is we don't know how shameless he is that's why we think just by standing as I said and live my life and you leave you you are joking you watch what happened between him and Jesus and the devil said unto him again this is the living word this is the logos of God all this power I will please talk to me what was the power that he would give him anointing what did he call power the kingdoms the systems the governments he called them power I will give you and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it do you know what Satan was telling Jesus in heaven you drove me but this one is my territory are we together now I have influenced the government I have influenced the system this one belongs to me if you ever see anybody rise I made it happen and so you better negotiate with me this is Satan he's not unaware that this is the living logos but he tells him how can I be in a territory and you want to lift somebody and bypass me he said look let me tell you this is what you are trying to look for he made it flash before him and he said I will give you he called all of them power the question is how did he get it I used to think he just got it from Adam yes he got the keys from Adam but how did he get the governments how did he get the systems to a point that he says it is my own I will give anybody I want to give it follow me Ezekiel 28 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise Ezekiel 28 verse 14 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. a story listen carefully of what we call the pre-adamite dispensation this was a dispensation before adam the man that we know are we together the bible ezekiel the prophet is giving access to revelation and he's speaking about the king of tyre whose life parallels with that of lucifer in the days of his glory now listen i hope you know that lucifer was created is that true and the Bible acknowledges that Lucifer please help that person the Bible acknowledges that Lucifer was a cherub is that true a cherub higher than the realm of angels are we together because by on by this time the mortal man Adam was not in the equation so after God directly under him were the cherubs or the cherubims under the cherubims were the seraphims then the seraphims and where the angelic keda and then the humanoid species that existed within that civilization are we together this was the organogram and then this is a description of lucifer it says thou art the anointed cherub who anointed him listen who anointed him god himself anointed him and the bible says that covereth the word covereth there is the word influence that you are an anointed cherub it says i have set this so so it was part of the predeterminate counsel of god that there be a cherub that is given an anointing are we together now most of you must have heard it the word anointed there is the word mimshak you know that 
the word mimshak there means uh, the direct hebrew rendition means to spread like to push your tentacles the extended meaning also means to multiply your influence within a region so this is the kind of anointing that he was given and the gift and the callings of god are without repentance are we together now listen satan was given this anointing that means satan also depends on the very power of god to still be satan today Are we together so we are seeing that satan got this anointing himself from god he said i have set this soul that was upon the holy mountain of god thou dost walk up and down in the midst of the stones of fire most people just teach that all satan was doing was worship in heaven um it's not exactly so yes it is true that his description he said that was perfect in thy ways in in the day that that was created till iniquity was found every angel has a will satan too has a will there is nobody in heaven and on earth that is serving god by force they can choose to rebel that's why when satan chose to rebel listen carefully god himself had respect for his rebellion but when you make whatever decision you'll be ready for the consequence now watch this let's see how this corrupted anointing worked if you don't understand this you will be surprised Hey, Jimmy, this is heaven where God dwells. Lucifer's anointing is corrupted. And Lucifer's anointing in the presence of God, the epicenter of heaven, influenced one third of the angels. One third. This is heaven where God dwells. And the power of that anointing exerted something on their wheels. Their wheels. He never changed any angel look at the warfare that happened in heaven that satan what did he say to the angels that they preferred him to god look at the throne room and the 24 elders yet satan came with an anointing and spoke something and one third of the angels said we will give up the throne room for you thou anointed cherub that covereth are you seeing how he won the kings of the earth in a moment are you seeing how he won the governments and the systems and he came to jesus he said have you forgotten i am still anointed though corrupted anyone you want with influence is under my care there is an anointing i was the light bearer of heaven satan is a master at manipulating the minds of people look how easy he entered peter peter close to jesus he just came at will in the presence of jesus and jesus looked and said this is satan peter this is not you peter did not even know this is how easy it is jesus was on a mission satan distracted jesus to a mountain jesus had to return back the anointed cherub let me show you where the power of satan is it's not just in witchcraft the power of satan is in his ability to capture the wheels of men of systems of governments you see that so give us second corinthians 10 again paul was watching this in a vision while it was being shown him and paul said so this is it the weapons of our warfare are not carnal it's not just about demons and spirits because a demon is in the wilderness and there was no human being to occupy and on his own there he said i will go back where humans are because in the wilderness there are no wheels it's inanimate let me go where there are human wheels and then i manipulate them listen satan controls the earth by controlling the minds and controlling systems and controlling governments this is a mystery that i show you when satan comes to you he will not tie your hands he is a master there is an anointing the very power of god working in him and until god fortifies you you will fall for his deceit satan desired to sift you like wheat 
he's telling Peter, Satan desired, whereas Peter had already fallen sins. This is powerful Peter. Satan came to him. Are you seeing why Satan entered Judas? Look how easy it was for him to come into the camp of Jesus and just manipulate people to the point that he almost got Jesus. Gethsemane, Jesus was there. Father, ah, and he said, no, nevertheless, not my will. Listen, Satan went to the wife of, a, of Herod and gave her a dream to advise her husband. And she got up and said, I had a dream. This man is innocent. Don't kill him. It looks like a good thing. If they didn't kill Jesus, there would not be salvation. Satan for you. Are we together? He's a master manipulator. If God does not help you, your mind is a child's play for him. He will beat you at this game. There is an anointing on him. Satan in heaven, that there is a roll call. He was talking to the angels one by one. The billions of angels in heaven, he won one third of them. To the point that they were ready to dismember themselves and leave their original estate. This is the one we are dealing with. And Paul said, listen, your focus should be on this mind. The mystery of strongholds. That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Right? But to the pulling down of strongholds. That's God's emphasis. You want to win Satan? Pull down strongholds. Cast down imaginations. Imaginations 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 why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing genesis 11 nothing they have chosen to do that they have imagined cast down imagination so the bible says let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind there is a kind of mind that must be in you which was also in Christ Jesus let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus that without this mind being in you that was also in Christ Jesus Satan will beat you at the game hands down there is an anointing he deceived angels in the presence of God Satan came to Jesus and attempted to sway Jesus the first time he didn't quote a scripture then when Jesus replied him, he took him to the mountain. Then the third time he quoted scripture, they shall keep the charge. It is not the quoting of scripture that brings victory, my brother, my sister. That's why Satan can be in a meeting. A demon can be with someone, a pastor is preaching. An anointed man is preaching. The demon is joining the person who is inside listening to. Say hallelujah, he's clapping, he doesn't stop you. And all of a sudden, something happens and the same demon starts jumping out. Didn't he fear the praise and worship? How many times did they yell the name of Jesus? Shout Jesus, everybody. You shouted Jesus. He was still there. Quiet. That's how you can share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus, he will share it with you and live too. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain listen the most important part of you that Satan wants is not your body the most important part of you that Satan wants is not your spirit. The most important part of you that Satan wants is your mind. Understand this. Your mind interfaces your body and your spirit. When Satan gets your mind, he gets two for one. He gets your body and your spirit. This is the Bible. I'm showing you because for years... I kept wondering why it looked like Satan was not afraid of many things about God. You close your Bible 
and lie down on it and sleep yet the demons come and press you how many of you have fasted three days dry and on the third day you had a wicked dream demons came and oppress you you've not even broken the fast you spent time blasting in tongues and you came to us men of god and we said you don't have faith it's a lie it's a lie there are not many things satan is afraid of i've listed some of them for you we think he fears everything no sir satan is never afraid of the presence of god he's only afraid of what the presence of god does to you you not the presence of god there are people who make this bible in publishing homes that are currently filled with demons inside them yet they are publishing bibles I have ministered deliverance to pastors mighty men and women of god with power who are also themselves anointed to deliver people the mystery of strongholds that satan captures territories and captures individuals by doing something to their minds this is what is called witchcraft here's what paul said oh foolish galatians who has he witched you not about drinking blood and eating flesh he sells a proposition to you in a way and manner that will force you to receive it and by it you give up the power do you know if Jesus saw that kingdom and did that Satan would rather collect salvation and give him kingdom remember jesus was about to be coronated after his death to be given a name that is above all names both of things in heaven on earth and under the earth and satan said let me give you on earth it looked like a wonderful idea are we together so paul says we are not unaware of his not his power satan has many devices many 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 devices from the word stratomai devices different ways he can come up with all kinds of plans to manipulate the minds of believers this is jesus satan stands before god and talks to god and god still respected the free will of satan listen I'm going to tell you some I know that I've attacked so many things today and many people now will insult me again because of all of this but let me tell you this I love the body of Christ but I want you to be powerful for many years we were taught that Satan can never access the presence of God it's a lie it's a lie it's not true there was no place for him found in heaven means that the office he occupied was no longer there but he could access the presence of God he still can in the New Testament or at least in the ministry of Jesus Satan came to Jesus many times he came to Jesus in Peter he came to Jesus in Judas he came to Jesus by himself he was not afraid it is not the presence of God that scares so that you have the Holy Spirit inside you and then people say there's nowhere satan can come close to you be careful jesus luke chapter 4 verse 1 was full of the holy ghost and yet satan came to him after fasting you would think the fasting would have driven him away is that true but after the fasting was attracting him and he came but there was something jesus did he didn't just say it is written it is written what was satan looking for remember that whole thing was about words and information there is an information and jesus gave him another information the moment he found out that jesus was informed the bible says he withdrew so when satan comes to you he does not search he searches for if what do you have what residue of mystery do you have what do you know about him and what don't you know about him and he can manipulate you and beat you hands down brothers and sisters what does satan tell a man that makes him to join occult what does satan tell a man that he can carry his child 
and slaughtered the child and while blood is coming out he's laughing satan was not there holding the knife the influence was the strength of the man by himself satan only left him with an information and went to bed and that man slaughters the child what does satan tell a man that he dedicates a whole land to satan an intelligent man look at jezebel look at jezebel under her watch the powers that be if you serve god almighty you have to go on hiding the prophets of Baal were flourishing because a woman who sat on the seat of government could manipulate the minds look at what satan did to herodias a small girl dances before a man and then a man comes and says what do you want even if it's up to half of my kingdom i will give you is that normal listen one of the ways satan has destroyed our lives and our families is through witchcraft but it is not witchcraft as we know he uses our imagination and distracts us into thinking it is just the drinking blood part of it and the old woman there whereas the true point of access of victory is something that he does to our minds and our imaginations to keep us through why does satan love pictures why do you go to bed and satan uses the face of your own mother to come and strangle you and you get up in the morning he never told you anything you just went to bed and saw the face of your mother and you got up and went to a prophet and then satan now shows a true prophet the face of your mother too and he confirms with what he sent to you in the dream and says your mother is a witch and you're a powerful prayer warrior yet you walk around believing your mother is a witch are you getting what i'm telling you the anointed cherub he was not just a musician no no he was not just a musician there was an anointing on satan for unusual influence over the minds of people that's what we call mimshak that anointing you see was given to satan god still gives it to men are we together this is not just some <clears throat> the, when you see any man commanding strange dimensions of influence and getting loyalty over the minds of people whether in the secular whether in the christendom it is that same anointing that is operational a wicked man like saddam hussein look at terrorists can you imagine there are still people enrolling in terrorist groups today young boys will sit down and say i want to become Hapa. someone goes to school and studies medicine for six years and just donates himself is that normal there is a grace that was the grace that jesus put on these disciples on learned men and in one day the bible said they were caught in the heart men and brethren what do we do and from that day to death they stayed with him the same grace that satan used to deceive one third of the angels that fell all power i'm not saying to use demon powers or this i'm explaining something powerful to you that when god wants to give you influence he gives you an anointing that does something to the minds of men Break every chain. Break every chain. That that is the kind of anointing that people go to the occult and say, I want to start a business. Listen carefully. And they bargain with Satan, the spirit of the Antichrist. They won't tell you. Listen, let me tell you this. If you are in this kingdom, there is a meter on earth that watches the rising of men. There is a level where if you are rising in life, and satan is not aware he will come to you trust me he will come to you and say i i'm seeing that you are doing something notable on earth and you have bypassed me what is the issue we can negotiate and it will continue most people will never tell you i don't care whether you are a man of god or you are a businessman there is a level on this earth 
you cannot rise through until you go through look for experience satan must come he will find a way of coming to you i shared with you years ago one night when i was praying in the spirit in the night is that true and all of a sudden i saw that my the the zinc everything just opened up and i saw a strange creature the eyes were as big as the head of a man and i saw it the tail was another living thing and it was fuming and looking at me and he said you think you can bring god's people to a place of abundance i shared that encounter he will come the realm of the spirit watches the progress of men there is an there is a level where if you are rising and playing around it doesn't threaten hell but when you get to a level they will come i assure you everybody you see who has risen without god knows what i'm telling you they will act like they don't know it from businessmen to investors to heads of government to presidents there are positions you can never rise until that negotiation is sealed look at solomon what happened to solomon after offering a thousand bond offerings god too came to him and said solomon let's do something only two of them knew if not that solomon told you you will just know he got up in the morning strange influence nobody rises like that is a lie there must be a visitation i want to be great in the name of jesus i'll be greater than bill gates get ready for look for something will happen do you know why i'm saying this because some of you you'll be surprised the two of this fast while you are fasting you go to bed in the night and here comes your ancient one idol in your family that has not appeared in 100 years he comes to you and say what what is going on in this koinonia you are part of i say your your father was a rich man do you know what made him rich say i know he went to harvard it's a nonsense let me tell you there was a negotiation i hear that this young man is teaching you something are you ready to agree with me and no government can stand you or will you negotiate and i frustrate you and you say satan is it not this anointing there is the god the giver of all grace access to the minds of people listen what happened in babylon when those three boys were rising the satan was uncomfortable and because he he acts out his will by men every time you start rising watch what happens to the men around you have you not seen that some of you as you are coming to this fast now those who were at peace with you have started quarreling fighting you there is something happening in the realm of the spirit you make up your mind i'm i'm going to marry right i'm going to live right and then you are walking satan does not disturb you but there is a level you are a man of god you are rising anointing you are winning souls a day will come you will have strange visitations and satan will say look you are not the only man of god rising we can negotiate this i won't disturb your assembly you will grow with wildfire but you are part of those kingdoms that he showed jesus there are people who nothing stops them on earth because the factor to stop them has negotiated with them so their life will be so easy and you will look at them and say ah what is this and satan will say likewise go and ask any rich man you know you first talk about this they will, they will turn and say don't don't disturb me they know it's not a lie whether young or old i'm not talking of 1 million 20 go and meet somebody he will tell you there is nobody that rises to certain influence without bowing to someone it has to be god or satan the power of strongholds that satan can capture your mind when he captures your mind you have bowed to him it's not by doing this that means the same way when you will your mind to god and say this is an instrument oh lord put something upon my mind put something upon my life all of a sudden an anointing comes upon your mind and my brother my sister your life will be a sign and a wonder even to you that men will look at you and say kai this thing is not normal it's true it's not normal it can be normal you see what is going on in this ministry we will be foolish to imagine it's normal no the mystery of strongholds 
it says pulling down strongholds what strongholds that by, by bet satan has programmed zaria already since satan has programmed nigeria since listen satan does not go around just chasing you he's too busy to look for you there is already a programming as you are between 10 to 15 there is one that kicks off between 15 to 20 there is it kicks off till you become an old man and paul said if you want to fight warfare don't just cast spirits alone if you want to fight warfare attack the programming something has happened to you that's why the people in your village behave the same way no spirit directly appears to them everyone in your village is angry it's not just that an individual demon is running a programming happened you enter a territory and all the ladies from 13 14 15 all pregnant no matter how nice they are it's a programming and it says you are not free no that means i can cast a demon from you that demon will go but when the stronghold that mindset is there the demon still calls you home it goes through desert regions and said there are no human beings here and returns back and sits down and calls others more greater than it is and the bible says the end of that man will be worse than the beginning so he said let this mind be in you let this mind be in you there is something satan has programmed that will never allow any that's why satan when satan does that programming he will let you go to church because he knows the kind of pastor you will meet so he's not afraid go 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 for the conference go for the convention and you can fast for 10 days and he won't disturb you pray fast he already knows what he has gotten but by the time a man of god begins to talk to you about this stronghold then you start seeing agitations he will start coming you are you are touching a nerve that matters in the spirit what is going on here who is teaching this why do you know how you have been called out of every tribe and tongue and nation not just because you are born again but that you have been given access there is an anointing that can teach you it can start teaching you something new that is not in agreement with what satan has programmed you into be and all of a sudden your life will begin to close the door for darkness to find expression jesus said satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself that means he puts something of himself in everyone so as he keeps moving around over a territory you say i see these are my people he identifies you by what he put in you but he looked at jesus he said why are you different he looked at babylon and saw everyone with it but he saw three hebrew boys he said no destroy these three boys why did they that is is like the mark of the beast he put it in everyone so you are born you you can be educated be as educated as you want to be marry have children but that programming remains there but in this week of seven days prayer and fasting my brother my sister the mistake satan made was to allow you to be part of this program because something will de listen listen this thing i teach you is that old wine skin that god must take away the problem is not just the wine the wine skin itself cannot take what god is doing let me tell you this if satan could kill me that would be his number one assignment to kill this guy let him just die and let this thing be over when you know this about satan he will pass you like this and you will pass him i tell you the truth it's true he came to jesus did not find anything of himself and he kept waiting how do i manipulate so satan's job on earth is not just to come to individuals so is to watch over territories and governments all the captains of industries all without exception all people of influence there has been a fraternity with a spirit somewhere either the spirit of the lord god almighty or this mystery that i'm telling you luke chapter 4 is a reality that must happen before any kind of influence is established on earth 
he said all this have been given unto me and i will give anybody i choose did you hear satan say that so don't be surprised when a musician sings nonsense and all of a sudden two million copies sell in one month that anointing was put upon that record label he sang rubbish but you listen to it you don't even want to dance and soon you find out you are shaking your head something is wrong with you that music is doing something you don't want to listen but you put it in your phone and save it as gospel music in the night you just quietly listen and as you are listening that that reprogramming is happening again this thing is not the issue of just spirits chasing you no this is an issue of something a mindset a stronghold their job is just to supervise because they know it will always be with you it's with you while you study it's with you while you graduate the moment you become the ceo of a company satan laughs because all those 130 people in that company have through that stronghold come under his influence this is what makes him the prince of darkness that guy you see is still using his anointing go and meet satan today and tell him give me an anointing an anointing to sing or dance or do whatever agree with him the plan is going to be make sure at every point you find a way of capturing these people to me so he gives you influence then you give them back read revelation 13 they bow to the antichrist you see that now the who now worships the beast so satan will not come directly he will send you like a businessman who sends someone in front to be doing business for him but it's his own so this lady all of a sudden satan now says and there are other agents like that on earth so they know who is initiated so immediately they work things out for you if it's capital you need you get it fast if it's access to record labels you get it fast within one month your album is everywhere and you who is a believer i won't bow to satan but no spiritual intelligence not only will you not move they will crush you intentionally you want to become a millionaire look for welfare that's why i tell you it's not the issue of business you can do all the business you want a day will come you will get to a level that you will see people in the bank looking at you they all know themselves you travel somewhere they look at you in the plane that's why they ask you a question what do you do what do you do they are not stupid they are saying are we together are we a team and you say no i'm from another camp how did you get here how did you get here this our dull world where the devil keeps manipulating and men just look and say you mean it you are 26 and you're a billionaire didn't you go to school who rises like that look at all these guys producing garbages everything they produce must work because they have sold not just their soul but their minds have you heard of that selling your soul it's not your spirit you take your mind and say satan this is the bargain give me influence and i give you men and so he puts that anointing on you that's why when people see young people like us and see what god is doing because they know they will look at you like a suspect and say could it be that you too you have received something from those people are you seeing why the influence of jesus disturbs some people crowds followed him to the mountain everywhere and the scribes sat down and said something is wrong Go. this guy is running us out of business and so they concluded that the answer is to kill him and the bible calls it the hidden wisdom of god god planned it that way they were scheming his killing to the point that they were willing to release barabbas barabbas that was a notorious criminal they say we rather release him we can always capture his mind again but let's kill this jesus listen do you know why i'm teaching you this there is something about your life that satan is already seeing they are watching you everywhere nobody has risen like this normally in your village and all of a sudden you are rising you are even fasting seven days and in your mind you believe as you are fasting you are driving all of them very soon you will begin to have encounters and the devil will come like look for and try to tell you look let me make this job easy for you i know what you are looking for 
is it not admission is it not greatness is it not influence is it not this we can negotiate it to you you just had a dream i had a dream and that's it and you get up anybody that stops you just dies and you think you are powerful one day the devil will remind you that i've been backing you up for 20 years it's time to give something back now and my demand is your firstborn and your wife the bible say mark the wicked something will always happen in their lives that will let you know this was not normal go and give this message to a very wealthy businessman when he leaves he will pieces the cassette and throw it away tell you this is be careful with all these young boys be very careful be careful are you listening to what i'm teaching you because we are going to pray a stronghold is not just demonic a stronghold is an information that has become a programming in your mind that makes you loyal to the sender the sender of that the, a stronghold is like a chain that holds your mind and so satan captures men like this that's why the greatest miracle that can happen to you is the opening of your understanding i keep telling you this the bible says then open he their understanding the miracle that needs to happen to you tonight my brother my sister is not just a miracle of healing the sick there is something that happens to your mind and that sickness will go there is something that will not happen to your mind and you may be healed tonight and by next week it has come back casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ bringing every thought look at me this is where it is this is where your poverty is this is where the suffering is this is what strengthens the causes to walk there is something that has been programmed that makes you even if a man of God says you are free all of a sudden the devil knows that he is still in your mind and he will show you one dream that takes you back he knows he's a master manipulator satan from whence cometh thou from moving to and fro the earth doing what just going around kingdoms and seeing which kingdom belongs to me ah this one does not belong to me okay who are the kings in that kingdom and he captures them and then leaves the kingdom and goes to another one this is his work this is his work but in the next few minutes we are going to pray i don't know about you but listen this is where god brought me freedom i saw people in my lineage i saw people where i came from helpless have you not seen the way people's results are still the same regardless of vocation reg some are even pastors whatever it is still the same a stronghold but he said the weapons of our warfare he will let you do your business provided that mindset is there continue doing it he will give you access but that you want to route it another way not him you must fight a fight of warfare The governments the systems of this world listen listen you're a civil servant no problem do your thing they promote you first promotion that's all right second promotion that's all right by the time you get to the third promotion you will find out that people who should not be talking about your issue are saying come on it is after the third promotion they now say boy this person is Igbo but it's, it's a lie it's not Igbo anything there are people who are under the influence of that's the devil pulling that string do something this guy is not for us if you allow him rise he will recruit people because if you allow him rise he will be in a board meeting with all the executives and he will play a message and there is power in that message they will hear and when they get born again they will go back to their subunits and do the same thing let me tell you something satan can lose a territory if those are both surrender to god satan can lose a territory in one week the secret to world evangelization or world dominion is not just evangelism is influence that's why when jesus was preaching every time he saw an influential man he stopped he saw the centurion he said no 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 let me go he saw zacchaeus 
he says Zacchaeus you have influence you are a tax collector you are the head of CBN come down I'm going to your house because by visiting you that something will happen to that territory listen Satan does not work the way we think he is that he pursues you as an individual he doesn't have that time do you know what it takes for Satan to zoom his attention on you no he just puts little demons around to just supervise what he has done when you are about deviating here they just coordinate you one sickness one headache just to bring you back like a buffer solution but Satan himself he's on earth Satan is on earth my question is who now is in his mind that's the person you should respect who now is giving Satan sleeplessness when Satan comes to Zaria if he's to talk to one person who will it be who is Satan so threatened my assignment is to make you that person that there is something about your understanding that the moment you go home in two weeks everyone who is not saved is saved doors are open and they say what is all this we believe in bowing down to a shrine but you came to this house and favor started coming listen this is what happened when God wanted to lift Joseph all the diviners had a formula for getting answers and God shot the heaven and said Joseph go the people were surprised the king was disappointed you are my wise men you are my sorcerers and you could not interpret my dream and the Lord brought Joseph and they were watching ready to laugh like Janus and Jambes that's why they were surprised Moses where did you come from who taught you how to turn a rod he said I met with another man I, I had an encounter the anointed cherub that covereth like an eagle spread her wings he covers businesses he covers great men he covers husbands he covers wives he covers families and says nobody comes within this circumference without making allegiance to me so paul says when you are about to fight warfare don't just focus on that spirit trying to find out what is the name of the spirit the spirit too is on assignment the real thing to conquer is the programming is someone ready to pray tonight open your mouth and begin to bless in tongues Outside, make sure you are Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Say, every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. For the last time now. You overcome. Every high thing. Hold somebody's hands. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every handwriting. 
every handwriting, every ordinance, every ordinance, every programming, every programming over my lineage, over my lineage, over my territory, over my, territory, over my mind, over my mind. I command you, I command you, be destroyed now. Open your mouth and pray. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says there is a kind of programming that can make the word of God of non effect. In other words, even if you prophesy to those people in the name of Jesus, let your life change, that that programming can fight the potency. It's true. I like you to pray and say every mindset. Say it again. Every mindset. Every mindset. That was in my father. That was in my father. That was in my mother. That was in my mother. That was responsible. That was responsible for their low life. For their low life. For their defeat. For their defeat. And it's in me now. It's in me now. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I announce. I announce to principalities. To principalities and powers. And powers that in Christ. That in Christ. I have been called out. I have been called out of every tribe. Of every tribe. Every nation. Every nation. Every covenant. Every covenant. Every ordinance. Every ordinance. Therefore. Therefore, I declare, I declare, I will not bow, I will not bow to Satan, to Satan. Yet I will prosper. Yet I will prosper. Yet I will rise. Yet I will rise. Yet I will be lifted. Yet I will put your mouth and prophesy. I will not bow. 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 Hallelujah. Now listen. Hallelujah. 
I just spoke to you about this anointing. You know why the Bible says, I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will glorify them. Listen, there is an anointing that if God puts on your mind, that idea must expand. No, that's how it works. There is an anointing that if God puts on your ministry, it will bring people under loyalty to the vision that God has given you. Listen, you are a businessman. Without this anointing, your products will not go far. I tell you this. I like you to say in the name of Jesus. In the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. The anointing. The, the anointing, anointing. That brings influence. That, that brings influence. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. For performance. For, for performance. performance. The anointing. The anointing. For expansion. For expansion. I receive it now. I receive it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Look at me. What is it about a message from a ministry in Zaria that somebody will collect it in the US, in the UK, and his assignment is to make sure everybody hears it? You to think. What is it that will make a taxi driver drive in and Koinonia message is playing? That you go to fix your phone and without your permission, someone transfers messages. There is an anointing. Oh. There is a grace. We are going to pray this thing. No, don't be foolish. Because let me tell you this. This is why many people remain small. It's not by traveling abroad. It's by what you are carrying, having wings in the spirit. There is a grace that gives the works of your hands wings. You will be in a cave like Elijah and Naaman will come and look for you. He said, Gentiles shall come to your light and kings, you won't go to them. This anointing will draw them. Lift your voice Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I command by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Go with this strange anointing right now. Go and increase and multiply. I decree and declare that from tonight, the grace of God is at work in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just bless his name. His presence is in this place. Lord, we bless you. We worship you. For ye are come unto Mount Zion, city of the Lord, the innumerable company of angels, spirits of just men.
Hallelujah. When, when Bishop Stan was speaking, he was encouraging us. You can know about someone when you read his books, when you study about him, but you know the person when you encounter him. Hallelujah. There is a difference between knowing the word and knowing the author. Hallelujah. How many of you truly desire to know the Lord? Yeah. Holy, 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 holy,
Lord, you are great. Who is man that you are mindful of him? Nor the son of man that thou visitest him. You have made him a little lower than Elohim. Crowning him with greatness. Yes, we declare that you are great. The power of God is strong in this place, I tell you. The power of God is strong in this place. God in the midst of his people is mighty. Come on, sing in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Sing in the spirit. That melody is coming from the spirit. Shama na 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is your house, your own. We welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about your body. This is your house, your home. I welcome you. This is Shekinah in this place. There is a presence that is beyond the imagination of man. Lord, we welcome you. My maker, my king. I love you with all my heart. Hallelujah. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. There is something about the presence of God. Listen to me. When you approach God, with a sincere heart 
when you approach God with a broken and a contrite heart your brokenness invites his presence John 14 21 says he that obeys my commands is he that loves me he says and he that loves me I will love him also and my father will love him and we will come and manifest reveal ourselves to him there are a kind of people that invites the presence of God they are not religious people they are not those who come to church just trying to watch just trying to be Christians there is a realm of intimacy with God where you press beyond religion you press beyond your denomination I don't care what it is you press beyond the experience of your parents that's what they seek to do in koinonia that we bring everyone to a point where we reveal to you the reality of Jesus Christ that is not just a religious fiction that was put in a book called the Bible for he desires to meet with those who will truly worship him that's why we pray that's why he blesses us with his presence let me tell you something about the presence of God when the presence of God shows up in a place no matter how hardened you are you cannot deny because configured in your spirit man is the ability to appreciate and respect his presence this is what breaks a man so you come in with all your pride and your hardness and whilst you stand there you experience the presence of one that your spirit cannot resist without the presence of God what we call preaching is just nonsense on stage for it is that presence it is because of the glorious presence see that's why the psalmist said cast me not from your presence he said do not take your spirit away from me he said I'd rather be a doorkeeper a gatekeeper in the house of God that I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord hallelujah you must develop an attitude to stop managing God he's not one of the many things is your in your life are you listening to me I'm telling you this God is not one of the many things that deserve your life how could you classify him in the same category with many things when he stands in a class of his own. For you are my everything, my destiny. You are my everything. My destiny. Confess it before him. You are my everything, my destiny. tonight give us an experience give us an encounter hallelujah hallelujah god bless you please be seated you're welcome the bible says in the days of his power people shall be willing thank you jesus acts chapter 19 
hallelujah tonight you will not leave this place the same i assure you god will give you an encounter beyond what you imagine for those of you who came for post ume god has a rude shock for you tonight you will leave ab with a gift that you met the king breathe upon me breath of god breathe upon me spirit of the lord as i lift my hands in surrender to your name most high i'm truly yielding to your spirit and i'm walking in your love jesus i adore jesus i adore jesus i adore your holy name let me sing the song just one more time please breathe upon me breath of god breathe upon me spirit of the lord as i lift my hands in surrender to your name most high i am yielding to your spirit i'm walking in your love jesus i adore jesus i adore jesus i adore your holy name so take my heart and mold it i give you my heart transform me take my will conform it to yours to yours this is my prayer i'm not preaching to you yet take my heart that's my desire lord whoa take my mind would you take my mind transform me take my will take my will conform me to yours to yours let my life be the temple of your spirit let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell lord i'm singing this to you let my life be the temple of your spirit let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer a sacrifice of praise this is my prayer lord Fill this temple, Lord. 
Fill this vessel, Lord. Fill this temple, Lord. Fill this vessel, Lord. For I am nothing without you, Lord. You are the power at work in me. Yeah. You're my life, you're my breath, you're my all. You're my all. It's your presence that grants us the ability to minister to your people. Lord, I thank you for the blessings of your presence. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, my friend, my teacher, my advocate, my strengthener. Stand by. The one who turns every wilderness into a fruitful vine and every fruitful vine into a forest. Lord, I thank you. It's all about you. Jesus. And all this is for you. Truly. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. I see if you should do things my way You alone are God And I surrender Lord, we are standing before your presence We have come to meet he that is able to change my father there are sick bodies in this place there are oppressed people joshua selman cannot help them lord let the people know i'm not the healer let the people know i'm not the deliverer let the people know there is nothing i have that did not come from you that i'm a product of your mercy and your grace and that you desire to bring everyone into this realm of intimacy the glory of your presence let it fill this place let the glory of your presence fill this place let the glory of your presence fill this place. Mantle your people with your presence, O God. Mantle your people. Let there be a holy convocation. My Father, my Father, Abba Father, my Father. I dare to call you my Father, my Maker, my Father. I hide behind the cross. Let the people see Jesus. Shataka bakata balata. Doza prasta bom prasta ba. Bashata barakata bozima. Blessed be. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mighty, majestic, holy. I adore you. Lord, let the people feel a piece of my passion for you. Shena Maria, na 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 mo shata bala na 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 na. Shena Maria. Shatana Masia, Shatana Masia,
there is more of my presence here the spirit of god i desire to draw men into my presence come approach my glory say the spirit of god i lead you into my glory say the spirit of god i lead you into my glory say the spirit of god into the beauty of holiness where i crown you with splendor and joy that is where i replace your heaviness just worship him in one minute let's let the whole the glory of God tests your seriousness because every time the glory of God shows up your flesh begins to react that part that will not bend to this glory his presence he will be refined i tell you the truth the secret of grace when you touch him the world will know that you touched him there's no guessing it there's no pretending it hallelujah is a God who sits in the heavens glory to your name verse 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body James. Who is James? James. James. Who is that? Can I see your hands? Come quick. You are awesome in this place. 
There are healings going on. God is healing people right about now. You feel the heat of the Spirit going through your body. It's the healing anointing. You are awesome. exam you are writing there is a problem and that problem will, may delay you in this school. Are you listening to me? Pray that God will help you. And don't be rude to any lecturer. Are you listening to me? Does this make sense what I'm telling you? Don't be rude to any lecturer. You'll be frustrated for nothing. The Lord bless you. Acts chapter 19. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Listen to me. It's God's desire that we become living tabernacles of his presence. Are you listening to me? That we become vessels of glory. The Bible says there is this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. It's God's desire that we come to a point where our bodies can host his glory. Where we can host his power. Where we can host his anointing. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that Paul was so full of God. He said handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons taken from the body of Paul. And the Bible makes us to realize that these handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul and it was used. And devils cried out. Sick people got healed. There is a realm of glory and anointing and power hear me that god wants us to step into beyond nominal christianity listen to me we live in a wicked world are you listening to me the lord has been showing me visions of the kind of demonic and satanic things that hell is releasing against god's people oppression sickness 
and now we we have let me tell you something and i want to warn you listen i believe in the word of god but can i tell you something christianity without power will frustrate you are you listening to me that you become full of god's glory full of god the bible says in that day it says the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and what the yoke from off your neck and he says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing in our bid to put balance between the word and anointing people have given all kinds of excuses for not pressing into god and we have trivialized the anointing of the holy spirit to a point that many people just say look forget about it there's all these people manifestation all the time let's sit down and receive the word what is your definition of the word because in the days of the apostles they did not have what you call the bible so what was their word of god are you listening to me a powerless christianity will end you in frustration i get i get messages and i meet people almost daily and i tell you the kind of oppression that satan is bringing the hostility that is coming from the pit of hell does not require just the kind of christianity where you say john 3 16 all things are mine uh -uh. are you listening to me handkerchiefs the bible says and apron paul was so full of the holy ghost the power the anointing, the potency of the spirit was in him. The Bible says to a point that people were waiting for him to step out. Peter was so full of the divine life of God that when he stepped out, his shadow, his shadow. Hallelujah. Jesus said something in Isaiah. In fact, Luke 18. Let's read the account in Luke chapter 4, sorry. From verse 17. The Bible says that he went into the temple as his custom was. And there was given to him the book that was written by prophet Isaiah. And then he opened it and there he declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, that Spirit, has anointed me. Smeared me, anointed me. And because of the anointing that I carry, he said, I will set the captives free. Declare liberty to the poor. It's amazing how we try to do God's work without his anointing. The anointing of God's spirit is his empowerment. It's the energizing that the spirit of God brings in us. Hallelujah. No king was ever allowed to function in ancient time until he was anointed. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, listen to me. One of the things that he does is not just to enlighten you and cause the word of God to come alive in your spirit. The Holy Ghost empowers you. Hallelujah. He causes his anointing to be alive and to be at work in your spirit. The Holy Spirit causes you to come into the place of his ability and his power causes you to begin to walk in the glory of God. The Bible says and Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost. It took the Holy Ghost for Stephen to have just been stoned and he did not he was not angry. It takes listen, listen to me. It takes the spirit for you to do some things you want to do. Are you listening to me? It takes the Holy Ghost to love for the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost to heal the sick, to set the captives free. If our Christianity is true, then we must be like Jesus. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, Peter speaking, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Jesus we are trying to become like, the Bible says he went about doing good on account of that anointing and the ability of the spirit and healing all they that were oppressed for God was with him hallelujah 
are you not tired of sympathizing with the many oppressed people around you are you listening to me how many oppressed people do you see around you every day and every time listen to me every time i see oppression i take responsibility for it because i know that god is not limited there is a level of glory and grace that we must step into and when we step into that level of glory and grace you will be able to host a greater weight of his presence are you listening to me a greater weight of his anointing a greater weight of his power and out of the overflow of that reality you will step in and begin to do the works of jesus He said, if you say you are the children of Abraham, then do the works of Abraham. That means if you say you are the children of God, do the works of God. Handkerchiefs and aprons. In John chapter 7, Jesus speaking from verse 34. It was on the last day of the feast and Jesus said, if any man thirst, he said, let him come unto me. If any man thirst, let him come. He said, and that he will drink and that out of his belly shall flow what rivers rivers the revelation of that river is given in ezekiel chapter 47 when the bible begins to talk about the river that came from the east side of the temple and the bible says that he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and then he measured a thousand cubits and then it was to um you know my my ankles he measured a thousand cubits it was to the loins he measured a thousand cubits he said and it was a river that i could not pass through he said wherever that river went the fish that was dead would come alive it's a life-giving river in fact the bible says there is a stream he said there is a river whose stream makes glad the city of god there is a river the river of healing the river of blessing the river of power the river of deliverance and god desires that we step into that realm where we can be useful for the king many of us listen to me we must step up many of us have been good counselors enough it's time for us to be miracle workers are you listening to me we have done enough of counseling enough of saying wow one day in the sweet by and by now it's time to be miracle workers doing the works of jesus christ there are many of you that if you will increase capacity you will end the captivity in your family you know what i'm talking about the thief cometh not john 10 10 but to steal to kill and to destroy satan has left his mark upon many lives and many families I was sharing i think it was during the minister's meeting i was saying that how that the lord showed me i saw an unusual release of the spirit of cancer cancer sent to different families breast cancer lung cancer cancer of the four ladies cancer of, i saw these things and it amazed me and let me tell you something if your christianity is just enough to say wow lord i thank you there will come a time when it will be as if the bible lied about the victory of jesus how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power in fact the bible says that when i came to you paul speaking he said i did not come with the excellency of speech the world has had enough of our noise he said but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not be grounded on the wisdom of man but on the power of God there are so many situations that happen to believers and we are so helpless about it and as helpless as we are God is also sad because that's not the limit there is more that he can do through us but we must build greater capacity for his glory When we sing the song, what manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He sings back and says, what manner of man are you? That you will not yield to me to see the fullness of me. 
What manner? Paul walked in a realm. See, listen, these guys walked in a realm that they called them gods. He said the gods are come down to us. They said Paul was Zeus and then his colleague Hermes. These were ancient gods. Men who lived like spirits upon the surface of the earth. This has nothing to do with ministry. It is the blueprint for safety for the times we are coming. You must be full of God. The anointing will be broken only to the degree. I, I, I think we, we were watching a program this evening. And uh, we are watching something. It was a deliverance that was happening to someone. And then I was watching. And when the person got delivered, the demon entered. Another demon entered back into the person again. Hallelujah. When you are full of the presence of God, I assure you, no demon. See, the Bible says, if you read NIV and other versions, they said the burden will be lifted because of the fatness of your neck. That the anointing will increase you to a point spiritually. Peter Tan, one great man of God, was caught up in the spirit some years ago. And he saw the state of his spirit man. The body was flourishing, eating every kind of thing. And when he saw his spirit, the spirit, his spirit man, was as thin as a broom almost dying and god told him this is how you are spiritually we have many men of god flourishing physically but carrying no power that's the reason why people criticize miracles and criticize the manifestation of the spirit and everything they say said look just stay stay with the word i believe in the word of god there are many people that come for miracle service and hold their Bibles in their hands. And at the end of it, you find them outside and demons are crying out of them. It is the ministry of the word of God in conjunction with the operation of his spirit that will bring men into liberty, that will bring men into truth. Are you not tired of the Christianity you see around? I'm asking you a question. Don't you ask questions that either... God told us a lie in the Bible or there is something we are not getting. And let me tell you something. I blame the leaders, including myself. The reason is because the degree to which we press in the spirit is the degree to which we give others opportunity to come in. When we become complacent with where we are and a few falling down here and there, there is a higher realm beyond just falling up and down where a man becomes full of the life and the power and the glory of the spirit listen the bible says stephen just lifted his eyes and there the heavens was open to him can you imagine such a realm hallelujah a man met me for counseling and he shared a story that broke me this is what he said he said he went to a particular ministry having a challenge him and his wife and after they, after they prayed, you know, prayed, did everything for him, he was desperate. Listen, he was really desperate and his wife was dying. And when it looked like nothing was working, guess what he did? You guess right. He went to a, you know, all kinds of things and, and did all kinds of conjunctions. And now, when, when people hear this, we do like this. Don't do that until you can prove a solution. Let me tell you something. We have no right to criticize any fake person until we can do the real thing. Are you listening to me? Is, um, do you know how many people, how many of your parents... How many of your brothers, how many of your loved ones that run to native doctors every day? They come to church on Sunday. You know what I'm saying. And you know I'm not telling a lie. Let me tell you, we live in a world that has a real need. Are you listening to me? A real need. A real need. And it takes the anointing of the spirit. Jesus walked upon the earth. And the moment he stepped into the scene, he was a breath of fresh air because the, the scribes and the Pharisees could not help. Lord, I pray that we will not be scribes and Pharisees in our generation. That our Christianity will be an authentic Christianity that will be able to meet the needs of people and do the works of Jesus Christ. We must be 
be satisfied with a few miracles here and there if there are 150 people who are sick and three people get healed we should be ashamed and go back and cry not rejoice and carry titles and say man of god apostle joshua selman am i challenging you because when you challenge yourself and you begin to press into the spirit then you open up yourself for more of his presence when i began to study about god's generals let me tell you something i tell you sincerely the generals that lived i mean before most of these people they did not have the opportunity for their life to be recorded those guys walk like spirits on the earth you need to study about them and you'll be ashamed of the things we are doing number one they had no worship team that steers the atmosphere right now we live in a realm where you must steer the atmosphere as if the holy spirit has become a generator so you say okay let's whine let's go let's go let's go let's go now the power is moving those guys moved in a realm of grace a realm of power their miracles were real miracles are you listening to me i heard of a particular man who they came and someone's i mean there was a there was a wound this big the whole family had done everything and he held it and closed it jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever what is your degree of hunger handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of paul do you know something i told myself one day if i have the opportunity to preach in a pastor's conference i will do something i will carry one person on wheelchair one blind person one amputee and i'll tell them follow me for the ministration i will line three of them here and say anybody that cannot heal these three sit quietly and let's press now we can laugh and feel nice but the native doctors are corrupting people they are corrupting our families all kinds of things are happening there are people who are dying satan's kingdom it is advancing i i, I was watching a, a program again this evening and someone was saying how that he was in the occult thing and he said he single-handedly won more than one million souls single-handedly i said god with our media we rejoice and say blue roof is full and we should be ashamed of ourselves are you listening to me hmm. bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion when there is a dissatisfaction in you you are ready to press further tonight i brought you to tell you that the realm that we are in the spirit there is a higher realm there are many of you who are sick here. you have been sick for long your families are sick is that true you have prayed for them nothing happened what are you doing about it Anything pinching you from inside or are you just complacent for our fathers of old pressed into God Jacob held him and said I will not let you go I will not let you go I will not let you go that a time will come your guitar stiff strings will be more than what it is today that as you stand before the nations and strike one chord one chord it will reverberate the hearts of men we live in a generation with many christians and nobody can tell us a very concise plan of god concerning boko haram we have men we have men of god all kinds of men prophets apostles we should be ashamed of all these our titles When Naaman sent, Naaman was sent with a letter to the king of Israel. And he went and he gave him. The king was afraid. Elisha said, why are you afraid? Call that man to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel. I don't know how many of us can make that kind of statement. Yes, we have celebrated HIV, tuberculosis cancers we have seen the grace of god but it's nothing compared to what god wants can i tell you something listen 
if this is my ministry inside this room i tell you if i can solve your problem the whole world will come and join the queue are you listening to me even if they will reach joss they will be patient do you know how little the solution of mankind is many people are not pressing into god it takes sacrifice friends to get to that realm it takes sacrifice that's why many people are not pressing that's why the few that press when they get there they are the only ones and pride kills them because the sacrifice is too great when they get there there is nobody in their class are you following me now one of the greatest men that i respect prophet kobus who has stepped into a level of the miraculous that i'm satisfied with in one service they brought out about 200 people on wheelchairs and crutches now that's that's the work of the kingdom the day everybody enters here and we prophesy to you and we say in the name of jesus receive a miracle in your family and instantly you receive a phone call from your father even you will know that something different has happened I assure you, next week, Koinonia, by four, you will be here. All your loved ones will live wherever they are. Do you know the rat race of man is to look for solution? I assure you, if they find the real solution, they will come. How many barren people move among us all the time? We pray and feel like men of God. Ah, tonight I'm here to challenge you. In your room. In your room. You can preach 100 sermons if you raise one person from wheelchair here you will do publicity without a poster and men come even if you come and complain they will just say let's see. embedded in the heart of every man is the need for every real solution and let me tell you the truth the fact that many people are skeptical about us means that there is we are not yet providing that degree of the god life because people will look jesus was an awesome wonder let me ask you a question please let me ask you a question please come aaron sweetheart please come you're a student here yeah? you're in demonstration all right listen to me if jesus were to appear to you right now let's assume i'm jesus and he says what do you want me to do for you what will you say you will run and carry your list that means the, that means you have problems you are just laughing the truth is you are not confident of the solution that is being that's why you are quietly hiding it and say let's manage what is there if if jesus christ if we are truly his representatives are you listening to me how many of you can step in to a meeting and be sure that you'll be healed be sure that you'll be changed that when they say in the name of jesus you are blessed you are sure that that word will come to pass Are you listening to me? That this lady is here. If I am Jesus Christ, what, what, what class are you? JS3. You are going to write JSC. You are finished. Now, if I am Jesus Christ and I come to you and I say, sweetheart, your JSC is A, will you doubt me? Why? Because I am Jesus Christ. Is that not true? Now we say, as he is in heaven. Listen. Listen listen we say as he is in heaven so are we in this life but how come if i tell you be blessed the truth is you are not seeing all of the blessings in your life you are just afraid to tell me the truth are you listening to me we gather people and claim to get them filled with the holy spirit struggle over them struggle over them turn their head up and down and then carry our frustration and go away and the people are irritated they know there is no power there hallelujah it's amazing that in the midst of this lapse we have men of god who make such boasts they say the man of do you know i get very ashamed Every time they say, now let's introduce the man of God, Apostle. And before they start, people are shouting. I'm saying, okay, Apostle Josh, Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, Apostle this. Do we match? So when people are saying, Kai, look at the demonstration of the power. Look at this. Uh -uh. 
I'm telling myself, I will not let anybody lie to me. I know the standard. The world is in a big need. We are celebrating ourselves like this because we have not been exposed. Go to the village and see the preparation that demons are doing. You will know we are joking. You know all this falling down doesn't impress them. It's just us that are hyping here. You go to the village and see a man divide a pot into two and pour water and you are seeing the other side and the water is boiling. Come on now. Even you, when you see that kind of thing, you will look at that man. I'm stirring up a real Christianity of power. And the truth is, when he finishes, when your father cannot afford your school fees, after going to the man of God and praying and sowing seed, prophet's offering, apostle's offering, every kind of offering, it doesn't work. I assure you, your father is going to the village. Except the problem is not too much. How many sick people leave Chica? Straight, they pass our churches and go to the villages. Some of your parents, have they not done it? We all came to Shika and prayed for them. Gathered around like men of God and made our boast and our noise. And nothing happened. And while they just look, they say, thank you, man of God. In their heart, they already know there's no hope. And somebody calls them and says, sorry, um, we, we, there, is, there is one Baba. And now you can sit down and easily say, how can a man go to a Baba? You are not yet desperate for solution. A woman who has been around 10 years, 12 years, no children. Any suggestion will make sense at that point. Are you listening to me? You are here struggling and we cannot even prophesy and say you will graduate in spite of your courses. I tell you, go to a native doctor in Zaria and see if you will not do something that will change your result and you will graduate. Are you listening to me? A lady who is shouting and saying no marriage no marriage and we are here saying okay let's manage the situation what is the psychological implication when you were 12 what happened look at that nonsense and you get to a native doctor as soon as you are entering he tells you born on the um, 16th of august your name is grace come and sit down there's a seat i've prepared for you here and this pot is boiling i know you like steven so what else tell me and say, Baba is true. And you see some of our parents as dignified as they are. See how they become children in the presence of devils because they are desperate for solution. They can come and sit here in church and we'll give them nice seats. But the native doctor will say, enter with your back. And they're entering because they are desperate. So, yeah, stand and the man stands. He said, now sit down. He said, if you turn back and you see your father and your mother, your dignified people, a man of God standing and we fold our arms and say you know uh, the Lord appeared to me don't lie to us don't tell us lies again because we need to be seeing the fruit of that appearance stop telling us lies that you saw Jesus and you saw angels because those who saw Jesus and saw angels in the Bible we know what happened to them let me tell you the presence of one angel killed 150,000 people those who chorus and seeing angels every minute every second come on am I challenging you tonight I'm shaking off things that the Bible says that David played his heart and something happened to Saul a spirit left Saul how many demons and principalities and powers lead the praises and worship in our church unaffected by the power of worship Thank God for the excellence. Thank God for the backdrops. Thank God for everything. Am I challenging you? What is your concept of Christianity? It says, out of him will flow rivers. Rivers. What you see today that you call a blessing and the power of God. Do you know it's just one step out of the cave compared to where God wants to take us to? We insult people and said they have gone to do all kinds of diabolical things so why don't you help them satan does not create anything he only perverts can we have a voice that will give us authentic biblical christianity do we have men like that 
that you can come to me with no job and you're already smiling when you see me because you are sure that you are going back with a job receive 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 and we're sweating and the protocol runs with a handkerchief so you're joking nonsense I'm not ashamed to say it we should be ashamed of ourselves I'm getting frustrated with all of these things we do and we sugarcoat our Christianity you know what God is angry let me tell you God is not happy about it oh God give me members let Koinonia come and fool and we stand and we look at the many people but there are people with needs real needs and it's amazing there are many ministers who are complacent we just sit down on Sunday share one but I don't care whether you are quoting scriptures from Genesis to Revelation if it's not helping people to become like Christ and really meeting their needs and breaking if your gospel is true Satan should react to it I don't mean reaction Satan should oppress you the people should be free it says and ye shall know the truth how come we teach we have sessions and sessions of weeks of teaching and I tell you demons attend all the sessions and only certain lower demons just manifest and we stand as men of God we are nodding but you know the real people who have demons you can't go and meet them because you know the demons won't go out you know the real people there are people troubling our fathers and our mothers we know that if we had if I gave you power right now that everyone every demon you shouted on will go some of you will enter bus this night and say Uncle Sam is leaving my house once and for all why are you unable to go? Hallelujah. A minister finishes ministering. And when he finishes, he says, pray for me. I'm expecting a comeback from Satan. What the heck are we saying? Jesus casted out a legions of demons and slept sound. The only reason why they caught him was because he gave himself. They took him to a cliff. And he just walked through there. And he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. That you can stand and look at your sisters and say the error of barrenness, the error of waiting, dying at 24, dying at 25 is over. This is not the issue of man of God. You are coming with an anointing full of the Holy Ghost. This is what I cried and I told God. I said, Lord, if you are not going to take me to this level of Christianity, let me stop ministry. I'm fooling myself. Thank God for all the things that have happened. Thank God for the supernatural supplies and the grace of God. But there is more. There is more. We admire men who have stepped into that dimension or a bit of it. And then we pray all the time and say, the Lord is going to send a revival. How will it come? Is it not going to come through us? Listen, there is a price. But I want you to know that God wants us to pay that price. To enter into that level. Are you listening to me? Because Satan is not sleeping about your case. Satan is nervous about your manifestation. And he's not going to rest. And if all we will get up and do is just ba 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 ba. Thank you Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! And demons are watching and say, I wonder how demons look at us. They say, what in the world is going on here? Power! And we shout. Jesus looked at a raging storm. He lifted his hands and said, Shalom, be still. Talk about authority. What manner of man? We struggle for hours with demons. He looked at the money. The demons were begging him. I've never seen a service where we come to and all the demons come to the front and say, please ministers, before time for sermon, we know we are going out. Can you send us to Shika instead of Giwa? That's what they did for Jesus. The demons made advances and said, let's negotiate. We are sure we are going to leave. Nothing will make us stay, but please, just send us to the peaks. And Jesus said, go, go, go. 
right now what we glory in what we glory in is to call a lady out and then once she's shaking you just want to prove look let me tell you we are doing things to cover for our laziness and lack of hunger you just find one yielded lady who is moving and like now i'll just touch you with one finger what the heck is that there are real sick people if you are really a miracle worker do it thank god for the growing of small small legs but what of the one who doesn't have anything can they come for miracle services too are they invited are they invited or are there some do you know listen listen do you know what it means when blind people lame people crippled people sit down and come to our services and we're shouting what manner of man is jesus then when we get to the place we made and immediately they say he made the blind to walk you see entourage and the man of god is stepping in now the man of faith and power he comes to sit down waste people's time makes all kinds of noise throws a few people on the ground one migraine here one cancer one wheelchair and the ass is going out we all boast and clap shame on us should get up and come there is a higher realm three men shook cities how many men of god do we have in zaria and in nigeria and yet evil is just thriving as if there are no men of god when paul entered the city demons responded from the headquarters and ran and the three two men paul alone covered asia minor no flight no nothing full of the holy ghost charles g finney these were men that stepped a bit into that realm listen to what charles g finney would do this is what he would do around the city he's walking around while he finishes praying guess what he will do he will just walk out of the city suddenly men will start falling down from everywhere people are just preparing in their factory the power of god hits the people if we have that kind of thing happening in our generation the man who build it joshua selman and will say now come and sow 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 everything so let me tell you something the day god will judge the people who are sowing all the time we, are, we, we just let them package your seed and sow into this anointing what anointing is because the people are so desperate so the little that is there they pour themselves to it but there is a god that sits in heaven and he desires for us to step in to a higher realm we're going to pray and god will visit you tonight but I don't know what is your definition of Christianity. There is a dying world out there. Enough of charity. We need miracle workers. Are you listening to me? We need miracle workers. A viper beats the hand of Paul. And Paul just looked at it and shook it. Shook it. Shook it. Lord, take us to these realms. Where did you take Alexander the way to? Lord, where did you take William Branham to? Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Where you will move in a level of glory and grace. A level of power and victory otherwise there is serious mourning that will come to the body because satan will eat up everything he can eat up do you know something the more you are being challenged and the more we men of god keep lying to you and not causing you to press and we ourselves will not press let me tell you the danger the danger is that satan will have a free ride and a day will come frustration will come upon the body of christ want to be one of the celebrity men of God who is wasting people's time and wasting God's time I want to be a serious person I told God that anywhere they invite me for a meeting I'm going there for serious business I assure you if we step into this realm of power you will know that you are a blessing to the world now your English notwithstanding all these rubbish things we put as excuses in ministry Say your lingua franca. Right now we live in a digital age. Let me tell you. If koinonia has just maths, if you are getting the kind of result that will scare you, you 
how did we used to meet before remember we're meeting where on the floor and we have many men of god you put balloon you put this the the p if the pa has his own cap this guy has his own cap whether we wear bandana whether we wear cap whether we wear green white green whether we wear football jerseys nothing will replace the absence of fire nothing see the reason why ministries compete they are only covering for lack of fire i assure you no man who has real fire has time for competition hallelujah i want to be that kind of person i know people who accept god helps them their situation is hopeless i went to shika one time i prayed for a lady i tell you i i felt how powerless my prayer was i hope i'm helping you tonight i'm the apostle josh who called but i'm telling you this there is a higher realm and we can either pretend it and continue doing ministry or repent from ministry and step into a life of glory that's what i want you to encounter i've repented for ministry since i've repented from it there is a higher realm there are many of you that cry in your hostels and you come and just sit down and say lord would you touch me and we're here laughing tell your neighbor uh -huh, uh -huh. how does that bring healing Sit down, Satan will keep being attractive until the day the sons of life come out. If I spit on you and your family receives a breakthrough, I assure you, you carry container and come and say, Josh, where is that anointed saliva? As 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 smelly as it is, you will say, No matter how fine you are. This is how desperate people are for a miracle. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Father, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. The rain of new levels. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. listen to me do not think this teaching tonight is for men of God I assure you you will deceive yourself the teaching tonight is not for men of God the teaching tonight is for a generation that is desperate enough that we are saying we are tired of this worshipers are you ready to enter the next level of grace full of the Holy Ghost out of your belly out of your words out of this mic let it flow rivers rivers of healing rivers of blessings rivers of power rivers of grace let the sick be truly healed let the oppressed be truly delivered set a new standard rise beyond nominal christianity rise beyond average yes you're a man of god but there is more yes you're a woman of god but there is more rise up on your feet everybody let's travel for a few minutes let it rain. Open the floodgates of the Oh, my God. 
there is more. I am tired of this level. Tired of this level. There is more. I can be a better blessing. I can be a better blessing. A generation of power, a generation of miracles, signs, wonders, living careers of the glory, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit, that we will confront the gates of hell, confront the gates of hell. The church, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. glory, greater anointing, more of his presence, more of his presence, there are powers that need to bow, there are situations that need to bow, there are levels we need to step into, hallelujah, I'm going to pray for you, I pray the prayer, and I pray, that tonight there will be a baptism of fire. More of the Holy Ghost. You need him. This is not just the issue of falling down. There is urgency. We need more of his power. More of the Holy Ghost. And I tell you, listen. The power of God will sweep across this place. I'm angry in my spirit. You must be ignited. You must be ignited. You must be ignited. I prayed and I told my father, invade the people with your glory. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to scatter yourselves around as much as you can. We are going to pray and there will be an impartation. No, you will not go back the same. You will not go back the same. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 What will happen tonight is a baptism of fire. The Bible says the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And fire. He said his word was like fire in my bones. Fire for miracles. Real miracles. Real deliverances. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Holy Ghost, begin to move across the congregation right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, I invoke power. I invoke power. I invoke an anointing. I invoke power. 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 Move across the crowd. Move across the crowd. Move across the crowd. God bless you for staying tuned with us on this platform, Reflector Hope YouTube channel. Uh, we are delighted to have you once again. And like God rightfully promised the children of Israel that none shall be found wanting. And they crossed the Red Sea and escaped from the land of Egypt unto a place where God have promised them. And none of them were found wanting. None by themselves and every one of them were complete. Jesus has had a good intention for you this year that he will bring you into 
your desired promised land like the bible said all that god have in mind for you are the thoughts and the plans of good to give you an expected end your desires your expectation your wants your need his plan is to bring all to pass and like you'll be receiving the word of the lord that you have received the word of the lord from the mouth of his servant prophetic declarations for this year 2024 and all that god have said he will do in your life he will surely do i like you to hold on to god because every bit of the word that he has promised will not fail none of them will fall to the ground it will not return to him void but must accomplish that wherein it was sent to your life your business your career are you sick in your body are you uh, having or experiencing a lukewarm spiritual life or a an unstable walk with the lord get set because this year the lord has released his word he is going to do you good ensuring you get back on track don't lose faith in the lord don't lose faith in god because all he has said Will surely come to pass i'd like you to subscribe if you are a new viewer on this channel and also hit the notification bell to stay tuned with us and the consistent word of the lord do ensure to share this video with your loved ones family and friends god bless you